And uh, what are we going to be working on today? Well, hopefully destroyers. So let's be a background. Um, I only play about 230 destroyer games. Okay. And uh, all that seems to be doing is to gumboat out of the DDDs and just run around like a headless chicken. So I've been playing a little bit battleships recently and i find that destroyer seems to be most important class because once you lost a flank and you don't have a dd you can't really push and you just have to run away sure so i was hoping i see you play a lot of dd very very successfully i was hoping maybe you can just teach me of what to look for what is the role of dd how to basic practical aspects in, in a random game to win because I think I, in some DD, I do okay. In some DD, I do terribly. Okay. Which just means that um, sometimes I got lucky. <laughs> so well, let's... ideally, I would like to have a foundation. So I know that. So if situation A occurs, this, this is what I should do. Situation B occurs, this is what I should do. Sure. Okay. So um, let's try to talk about this. Let's define the roles first. Let's know what we're doing, know what we can do. So we're gonna start with probably the easiest, most basic concept of a ship, battleship. What is a battleship? Um, and don't worry, you don't have to answer this one. So battleship, sure. tons of health, tons of armor, big guns, shoots kind of slow, you know, shoots every 30 seconds, 40 seconds, whatever. So it's, it's just a big giant thing with big guns. All right. Well, let's step that down. If you've got this thing that has tons of health, tons of armor, gigantic gas guns, why in the hell would you ever derp around in a cruiser? Well, that just doesn't make any sense. Why would you give up all that stuff? Because you gain more movement, you gain better concealment, you gain faster firing guns in case you miss. You can shoot a little faster to try to hit the next time, or you can try to hit maneuverable sneaky targets that are gonna wiggle around a lot. And uh, you also gain access to consumables. Now, battleships can heal, but on a cruiser, you're going to have radar. You're going to have hydro. You're going to have things that can allow you to take possession of the map with consumables. You can spot things or deal with things in ways that battleships can't because that's something that cruisers get. That's a strength that they have. And then we can extrapolate that a little further down to destroyers. What are destroyers? Well, they shoot faster than cruisers. They have less armor, they have less health. In fact, they have almost no armor and almost no health. <laughs> um, but just like the cruisers get better concealment than battleships, destroyers get better concealment than cruisers. And they can also attack while undetected because they can torp. Um, it's really low accuracy, but it's a threat. So if a battleship is gonna be seen and has giant guns, well, it's seen so it can take some damage. If a cruiser is in between, it can choose when to be seen and it can take some damage, but not a lot, but it can still express itself in the match. And then you've got a destroyer which either doesn't want to be seen. And for the most part, a destroyer doesn't wanna be seen in a competitive setting. When you watch players play on uh, stream, on Twitch or whatever, where they're running around with a, a DD murdering everybody, it's because they're extremely talented players and they're playing the ship in a way that's gonna avoid a lot of damage. So because of that, they're able to keep shooting and rack up big damage numbers and look really cool on stream or you know, work on a leaderboard position. But that's not, that's not the native concept for what a DD is because you have no armor and no health. But you are small and you are maneuverable, so if you're very talented, you can kind of make that work and still be able to get those damage numbers in if you want. But if we remove damage, if we don't even think about damage, then what a destroyer can do is um, there's going to be a back line, there's going to be a mid line, there's going to be a front line. Back line's a battleship. Its detection is horrible. It's slow and unwieldy. It can't find a DD. It can't, it's just not gonna happen. Not if the DD player is paying attention and doesn't let itself get found. The midline or cruisers, they potentially might interact with the DD off consumables, but again, the only way a cruiser ever finds a destroyer is if a destroyer allows it to find them. Or it's literally shoved up against the side of a map and it just can't get away. But the destroyer put himself there, so whoops. So your job is to be the buffer zone, is to be the in-between. 
So what a cruiser can do for a battleship by being in front of the battleship and kind of looking for torpedoes, looking for threats, giving information back to the battleship, that's what you're gonna be in your destroyer. You're gonna be looking for threats, buffering between you and the cruiser behind you. And one thing that you need to remember is destroyers are extremely weak. Your guns, for all intents and purposes, suck. Your torpedoes don't, but torpedoes are really low accuracy and you have to be extremely close to be able to guarantee that they're gonna hit, which means you guarantee that you're gonna get hit. So it's not something that you live on, you know, hey, I'm just gonna torp everybody. So what you're, the best thing you can do in a destroyer is have a cruiser in your back pocket. The best thing you can do in a battleship is to have a cruiser in front of you. You know, it's like you work together. Because if you are in a situation where you trip across an enemy DD, he who has the most friends wins. So if it's you and three friends versus a dude and two friends, well, you've got more people swinging, so you probably beat the crap out of them. Probably. Might not go down that way, but, you know, math. Um, so we'll play, we'll play some games, we'll see what happens. And I was trying to think about how we do this. Um, I think I'm just gonna have to feed you a lot of information so that you can make your decisions because it's a little hard to tell you all the stuff to do or things to do when you're in a destroyer so that you can kind of make it happen. So sure. did you want to play oh. in ranked? Did you want to play in randoms? How did you want to oh, play? Oh, no. Um, what, what I could do is I can play one game and do what you do, try to explain my decisions and you can see how many mistakes you can point out. Okay. Or do you try to follow your instructions? It's up to you. Um, that's up to you. It's it's good to know what your play style is, what your thought process is, and okay. then maybe we could go back and look at a replay sure. of it, or we could just talk about it, and then obviously uh, roll it forward. So it's up to you. The most, you know, the most comfortable uh, destroyer I have, I played is Orkham by 20, 22 games, which I'm decent in. The kid I'm terrible in, I played by 22 games, and the T61 I think played by 30 games, which is like a so let's let's try and do something which is um a little more personally focused be, so you can learn so i learned my first ever dd line was german um and then my second dd line was british british is going to be a more not i'm not trying to say it's a selfish dd line but a self-sufficient dd line because uh the the British line has smokes that can help itself out of a jam. Uh, it often has a heel, like the Jutland, I think, uh, I see on your screen. So the Jutland would be something that we could definitely use. Um, the Lightning does not have a heel, but the Lightning is very good. Uh, but if you wanted to use the Lightning, we could do that. I, I think we should start with maybe a British destroyer. Now, before uh -huh. we go into anything, let's go ahead and get the commander on it, and let's start looking at what our options are. Sure, but bear in mind, only play two games in Jalen, they're literally free XP. <laughs> oh, yeah, it, so. it doesn't matter. I mean, DD is a DD. This this has sure. some particular uh, characteristics about it, which we can talk about, but... All right, so... My, uh, yeah, so you have preventative Jalen, maintenance, yeah. which is good, because if it saves you a damage con, that might be the difference between, you know, having a damage con when you need it or not. It, realistically, you're, you're going to get a lot of shit broken on a DD, so who knows, but... Potentially, you have less shit broken because you have the preventative maintenance. So that's cool. Last stand, love that talent. Some ad highly advanced DD players do not take last stand because they're like, ah, I can take care of myself. I ain't one of those. I don't know many people that are, so take last stand. So you did, that's great. Survivability expert, absolutely the correct thing. Having more health is better than having less health, especially in, in a destroyer that's looking to fight. If you were in a sneaky, sneaky torpedo destroyer, you're never going to be spotted. They're never going to shoot you. Well, then who gives a shit if you have health or not? But you're in a Jutland, and we're playing this specifically as a learning choice. So having more health, definitely good. And then the first four-point talent is Concealment Expert, because that is your strength. That's a thing that you are going to use to make yourself powerful in the game. So that's your first ten points. Great. Then for the next one, we have Consumable Expert, which is gonna give us uh, additional smoke, which doesn't matter so much because British smokes smoke so much, but it's gonna give us an extra heal, which translates to more health, which translates to being less dead. So definitely Consumable Expert for the heal. 
you have adrenaline re rush which basically everybody takes always because they just like the talent so it is what it is people got it woo and then with the last points you picked up rpf which gives you free information free information is great so is it going to give you the most damage no is it going to give you the most whatever no but it gives you the most chance for doing the right thing because free information means you're probably less likely to be uh murdered so if we look over at the side um there's detectability by c it's a little hard to see but i think that's 5.7 is that correct yes correct cool so that's actually pretty good a lot of destroyers their detection is going to be around six kilometers so 5.7 does out detect some other destroyers which means that puts the ball in your court but do you know what rendering delay is uh about a second yeah so it's, it takes about a second after a ship is in your like you're able to detect it before it ever shows up so it's very very possible that you could go against a destroyer that's 6.1 kilometers but you trip over them without knowing it oh shit what the hell i'm detected and now they show up and suddenly you're you're five kilometers four and a half kilometers away from them you're super close so even though you had that little 0.4 kilometer detection buffer you just <laughs> sail right through it or they sail right through it and then suddenly they're just you're so close you're hard detected so 5.7 is important because it gives you an advantage against other things. You might be able to spot them for your team when they can't see you, which means they get shot and you don't. Always a plus. Um, <clears throat> but you have to understand, it might sound like it's a lot, and you'll talk to streamers or you'll pe you're, you will hear people describe it. Oh, man, it's huge. It's just how can you even lose like this? It's really small. It's a very small advantage that it takes a lot of skill to make use out of. I'm telling you this now because when we get into a game, uh, if you ever for some reason play the Japanese torpedo boat line, you might have 0.1 kilometer better detection than somebody else. You can make that work for you, but you have to be in a situation where your bow, your nose is pointed away from the enemy so that when you do come into contact, you can immediately start to move away from them so that by that, that second, that second and a half where they wake up, they show on the, on the game that you're still holding that range difference or you can run back a little bit and give that range difference. So the concealment is important. It's good to know because again, if, if your team is shooting them and they're not shooting you, well, then you're not getting owned. So the concealment is a huge part of destroyer play and 5.7 is something you need to know. Depth charges, AA defenses, maneuverability, a lot of this stuff doesn't matter very much, but <clears throat> for the sake of understanding the ship that we're in, you have 12.5 uh, kilometers gun range. That's actually pretty good, so woot. And we look at AA defense real quick. <clears throat> I want you to hover over, uh, first off, damage by shell explosions. So three flak puffs. Three is not a lot. <laughs> Three is something that you might encounter at tier six, which means a CV can fly through that fairly easily because there's going to be holes. There are going to be gaps. So because of that, flak is not something that's going to keep us safe if we're alone. So if there, we come under coordinated uh, CV attack, uh, their planes are really an issue, we're going to need to add our three little flak puffs into a tactical defense net with other ships. You know, if another ship's throwing five and we're throwing three, well, then together we're throwing eight. Eight is more likely to hit a plane, etc. So you're, you're familiar with CV play. You understand that stuff. But I'm still throwing it out there for information purposes. Our flak is not strong enough to reliably interact with enemy planes. So if we can tie our flak in with other ship flak, then we have a chance to interact with enemy planes. But natively, we don't really. And let's look at continuous damage. So we have 67 out to 5.8. That's not great. It's functional but it's not great and then we have another 109 if it's within 3.5 so if they're both working together we do basically 175 damage uh, per second that's not bad but it's not gr good either that's 10 seconds 15 seconds to kill a single plane so if we use priority sector we're going to chisel them down a little more but what this means is if we're operating completely alone fuck our team we're doing our thing if planes come over to sit on top of us, we can't murder them. 
So we do have to remember that if we're in a CV game, we can't just run off to the ends of the earth because if we have a CV that decides to sit on top of our face, then we're probably just sitting there smelling foul air. So it's just something to know, but we're gonna look at something else very important in just a moment. So let's look at torpedoes real quick. So torpedoes, we have a 10 kilometer range. Cool, we throw up to 10 torpedoes, nice. They go with speed, whatever. The faster speed is more likely to hit, but even then, torpedoes still miss, so who cares? The big thing to know is we torp at 10 kilometers, our detection's 5.7. We can torp them without being seen. So that's cool. Um, that's basically the extent of the torpedo play. The more you play with torps, the better you'll get at it, but uh, mostly what the British destroyers are gonna rely on are their guns. So <clears throat> we don't have to worry about that, really. Um, one, okay, so let's step back and let's look at consumables. And we'll also look at upgrades. Okay, so first we'll look at the upgrades. So let's look at slot one. All right, so main armament mod one. Uh, go ahead and click on slot one just so we can see some options. Uh, magazine mod reduces detonation chance. Ideally, if you're in a destroyer, you're running a debt flag. If you want to be greedy, you can play Magazine Mod 1 just to make sure you don't detonate. I mean, for the most part, you're not going to if you don't use flags. It's already a small chance, that makes it even smaller. But outside of that, do we need to save our AA? Our AA is not great, so we wouldn't use Auxiliary Armament Mod 1. Damage Con Party Mod 1 is an advanced mod. I wouldn't ever use that unless you have a specific intent for it. So Main Armament Mod 1 is a great choice. So the only two options here, main armament mod one, so you can save your torps and your guns, or magazine mod if you feel like being greedy and you don't want to run a debt flag in a random battle. Let's look at slot two. So damage con mod one, engine room protection, and then hydroacoustic search. You have hydro selected, which is not a bad choice. Typically in a destroyer, you'd pick engine room protection uh, because again, the less you the less times you have shit knocked out, the less likely you have to burn your damage con, the more likely you have it when you need it. Woot. Hydroacoustic search, I think that increases it by 20%, is that correct? Yep. Yeah, so one thing that's worth remembering is that the hydro on a British destroyer lasts three minutes, which is a lot of minutes. So if you get into a situation where you... Um, you're about to cap and you want to stay safe, you pop your hydro. You go into a situation where you're uncertain and you pop your hydro. You don't get to turn it off. It's going to run its duration and then turn off and then you have to wait for the cooldown. So sometimes it's not a good idea to have more duration because once you hit that button, you don't get to choose to hit that button until five minutes in the future from now. And odds are that if you go into a cap and you brawl with a bitch, you shoot them, they shoot you, somebody dies within a minute, and now you got four more minutes before you can choose to when you want to use your hydro again. So extending the duration can be a little tricky because it might actually just make it longer before you get to use your hydro in a situation that you want to. Um, personally, I'm going to recommend that you swap to engine room protection. Make sure that you don't uh, sell hydroacoustic search because that would suck. So <laughs> demount for doubloons. Cool. cool. So it's going to give you three minutes of hydro, which is a lot of minutes of hydro. Uh, for slot three, let's check that out. All right, so there's main battery mod uh, two. Your guns move super fast. No worries there. AA gun mod one, that gives you a better priority sector, which your priority sector hit on a destroyer is not shit. But it saves you two seconds. It's not that big of a deal. Probably don't care. Um which really comes down to aiming systems or torpedoes. Well, it's a gunboat, you're gonna be gunning shit, you've got aiming system locked in, it's the right choice. Torpedo tubes wouldn't be a bad idea because it gives you a little more speed, but realistically you don't play the Jutland so you can torp things. You play the Jutland so that you can heal and you can shoot. And then smoke generator mod has nothing to do with the British line, so there's no reason even to give a shit about it. And then number four. You'll notice here we don't have propeller mod. Propeller mod is baked into uh, British destroyers, and I believe the light cruisers as well. So this is extremely important for British DDs. British DDs uh, suck at stopping, and they also suck at getting out of reverse. 
So if you ever start to reverse and you're slowly drifting backwards and then you slam it in the gas and you want to go forward, you get to swear profusely for the next 30 seconds while your ship somehow discovers the ancient art of stopping so that you can actually go forward. So in a British destroyer, it's almost better to stop and then be ready to lurch forward at a, at a just take off speed than reverse and be trapped in reverse. That can be a weak point for you. And the other thing is, with the, the British style destroyer, you don't slow down very well at all, which is something you need to remember. So we have damage con, we have steering gears, we have depth charges. Well, we're not in rank, so depth charges don't matter. Damage con reduces a fire. Who gives a shit about fires on DDs? So yeah, steering gear, correct choice. Let's look at slot five. There's not concealment, concealment, also not concealment, and a third version of not concealment. Well, concealment's the only one that matters, so congratulations, you picked the right choice. And then we go into slot six. And slot six, again, we could go into a torpedo build. You'll see some advanced players could take gun control system two, or the gunfire control system, get the additional range. Because as a destroyer, you are hard to hit. You are small, you can be fast, you can make quick turns. If you were an advanced player and you wanted to try to farm a bunch of damage, you would take additional range. Now you could take that as a commander skill, which we have not done, which is perfectly okay. Or you could take it in slot six so that you can shoot things from like eh, 15 kilometers away. It's gonna be a little bit of lead time. Your, your shells are gonna be upon a floaty, but the further you are away from them, the more likely they miss because you can move. Well, that's not anything we're worrying about today, but that is a viable choice if you wanted to extend your range out to be able to farm damage and murder people. And then lastly, auxiliary armaments, which is going to be an anti-air skill. We don't have defensive fire. Our anti-air sucks. That's not for us. So main battery mod three, mwah, chef's kiss, shooting bitches in the face is what a British uh, DD does. So no problems there. And now looking down at the destroyer, we have damage con. That's pretty basic. I want you to hover the smoke. So it has an action time of 10 seconds, very short. You don't get to draw a long smoke line. It's just a little puddle of poof, you know, in the middle of the ocean. Smoke screen dispersion time, 40 seconds, very short. But it's rapid cycling. There's a 30 second difference between the smoke screen dispersion and reload. So once you pop your little thing, you get to go around doing stuff maybe in your smoke screen, and then it's back up very quickly. You have seven of them. So this is not a smoke that you use to support other people. This is a smoke that you use to support yourself. You can use this in two ways. You could smoke yourself and shoot, which is what most people will do. Or you get in a situation where you're fighting, you're shooting, or maybe you're spotted in a situation that you do not want to be spotted, you throw your smoke, you break detection, you get the fuck out. So this gives you a very personal, very consistent way out. And as a newer player, you're gonna find yourself in bad situations more often than not. So having your own little personal cloak is gonna be something that's very appealing for a newer player when trying to learn how to play. So you have a lot of smokes, you don't have to be afraid to use them because they're not for other ships, they're for you. There are smoke screens that, are, that exist that should be used with other ships. The US destroyers should be used with cruisers and other ships. You're not playing that right now, so we don't have to worry about that. But if you notice here, the consumable duration on the kid, I can't really see that very well, but I believe it's 30 seconds. One, five, two. It's three times. Yeah, 30 seconds. Yeah. It's three One, times two, as long as the British. So you it's can draw a line time. three times as long and it lasts forever. It lasts over two minutes as opposed to 40 seconds. So like, uh, it's the British smoke is like taking a hand towel, trying to put it over your crotch when you get caught naked. And then the, uh, the American smoke is like a nice snuggly bathrobe or something you can throw on when unexpected guests show up. So anyway, other two consumables, we have hydro. The hydro on the, on the UK line is weird. It's very long duration. So it, again, it's kind of personal. It keeps you safe. It doesn't really help anybody else because it's short range, but it keeps you safe, which is nice. And you detect ships to three kilometers. You also detect torpedoes to three kilometers. So again, it, it's short range, but it keeps you safe and it's long duration. So once you pop it, you're kind of like, you got a handle on situations for you and for torpedoes for the next three minutes. And then lastly, we have a heal. 
nothing super special about a heal but more health is better than less health okay so because we're playing a destroyer let's try to use some flags let's see what you have and uh, we'll go into the signals section so you have a destroyer or a debt flag on great we want as a dd the speed flag and the heal flag I would also recommend the cooldown flag, which is November Fro Foxtrot. Everything else, you don't have to run. There's a smokescreen one. I wouldn't care about that in the British. There's a hydro duration one. Your hydro's fine. Uh, all these other things, like, they can result in more damage. But you're a newer player. You're not here to murder everybody. You're not here to get on the leaderboard so you can be, you know, top 20 EU. You're here to learn what the fuck you're doing. So, I mean, you can flag up, down, and sideways, but that's not going to translate into being amazing. It just gives you slightly better fire and flood chance. So, all right, whatever. We've got flags on. Cool. So for the first one, um, odds are I talk too much, so I will probably chime in. But I kind of want to let you do what you're going to do, uh, maybe with minimal instruction. Uh, sure. But knowing me, I'm probably going to talk a lot. So we're going to see a random battle. We're going to see what happens. Yeah, very few CVs in, on EU. Well, I mean, there, there's a good part to that and a bad good part. For me. <laughs> well, good for it's good for you in that there's a CV that's not going to be on top of your face. It's not good for you because you get to figure out what you're against as you're playing. You don't get to know beforehand. Uh, only one radar. Pretty good. So there's only one radar. There's a Fletcher, which... I don't remember what its detection is. A Yugumo, which out-detects you by 0.2 kilometers. It's not great, but it's significant if the Yugumo player knows how to use it and doesn't trip across you. Nustrashimi out-detects you by 0.1 kilometers. I think it's 5.6 on that one. And then the Oyster, Ostergotland is 6, so you out-detect it. And I think the Fletcher is similar to you. I think I'll hang around this outside B cap. Okay. Since I, uh, there's no CV and I got RPF, I don't okay. think there's anything can out detect me too much. Can always drop a smoke. Can you make your map out. any bigger? Sure, speak a second go. Let me see. I don't think the buffalo will come to the middle. No, he's probably going to find an island somewhere. Yeah. So like I said, it's only. If Yugumo can out detect me. Oh, the Fletcher's come with me too. Cool. Yeah, most people tend, most destroyers tend to go toward whatever cap they happen to be at. But while we're looking at this, so we see that there's a Fletcher there. Fletcher's got guns. But what are the ships behind you doing? Yeah, they're all moving to A. Yeah, but they're all move to the island. They're all bailing. So what this means is, if it comes to a heads-up fight, if the enemy has cruisers and you don't, then you lose. I mean, it's more complex than that, but in short, don't be afraid to run. So don't dive into this cap. You're going to want to probably reverse in. And I know I told you how awful reversing is, so you can actually just nose into the cap and you turn out if you want. I know the Fletcher going first. Well, that works well. too. But just be prepared. Be at a situation where your nose is not pointed directly at the enemy because you might be stuck in a situation where... Yeah, something is neat. Also, your, Sorry, go ahead. your RPF, try to figure out where the enemy ship is. So you can probably click the map, uh, maybe F6. Yeah. See, they're F or G6, yeah. Cool. Moving between the gaps. So right now you don't have to worry about the enemy DD because he's not here. But there is, it looks like a John Bart that you could probably throw some torpedoes at because he seems to be just sailing in a straight line. Or you could smoke up and you could start to fire at him. Cool, there's a DD. Smoke up and start firing at the DD. Smoke and fire at the DD. And you're going to want to use HE, not AP, because at this angle, AP is just going to bounce. Yeah, which is the full. Now notice, don't don't leave your smoke screen. All right, yeah, you take forever to slow down. Keep shooting, shoot, 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 shoot. <clears throat> oh, damn it. 
It's fine. You'll reverse it and you'll be okay. Just keep shooting. So, <clears throat> this is one of those situations where an enemy destroyer was caught bow in. So, he couldn't run, which meant you could take advantage of it. Now, unfortunately, your Fletcher bro is also in smoke, so you don't get to see the Jean Bart. So, you're going to have to leave now. But this is the nice thing. No, you need to leave. You need to leave now. You need to leave, as in going forward and getting the fuck out now, because there's a Jean Bart that's about to trip across your face. You may actually have to uh, torp him. So throw your torps, throw your torps, and yeah, too, late. too late. Yeah, so just try to get the fuck out. <clears throat> I don't understand why your Fletcher was, maybe he was behind your smoke screen. He obviously didn't smoke himself. Just throw it directly at him. This dude's not making like, this dude's not a pinnacle of piloting here. Okay, so just shoot, shoot the, you have a smoke between you and him, guns, guns blazing. You want to make all of your smoke matter and you need to slow down. So, <clears throat> so you're spotted by something in Charlie cap now. So in the future, whenever you're going to pop a smoke, you already want to be slowing down. You can, oh, well, that's going to be a problem. Um, yeah, I'll pop the hydro at the same time. Okay, you go undetected soonish. You did get a torpedo hit, which is nice. Honestly, at this point, you could just open water gunboat this dude, because this dude doesn't seem to have any clue what he's doing. Shoot him, set some fires, get some get some resets and whatever. And if you happen to see shells coming your way, then you can uh, take care of that. Do me a favor, and once you've got your aim locked in, just hold down the right mouse button, and then you can hold down your left mouse button, and you'll just keep shooting. You don't have to aim every time because your your guns will stay aimed so you'll they'll shoot for you so just zoom in take a position on it okay zoom in look at them set your guns now hold the right mouse button and just hold down the left click and you can look around and your guns will keep firing where you set them relative to the target so even if it moves your guns will stay in the same place relative to the target cool so we've claimed middle position where were we, where are we going to go from now it's kind of well, looking awkward to go to C. I think maybe you help with uh, Alpha. Also, somebody is close because you're still detected. So yeah. somebody's in the upper end of C. And actually, you can go toward that. Go toward the RPF ping because we can see that there's somebody in the, in the top end of C. You as a British destroyer are made to brawl. You can kill other DDs, and if you have to, you have a smoke that you can pop to keep yourself safe. So let's try and give some assistance to our guys that are falling back at Charlie and be able to help with them. I don't know what the Fletcher's going to do. He's probably just going to shoot whatever's close to him. Just to go hydro for a minute. So. Yeah, this is where the having hydro last forever can be rough because it's like you're... You're going to go into a situation and it's not going to be up. <clears throat> it's the Russian. It's in the, the Russian one, which I can't pronounce, have quite good um, detection range as well. The Nustrashimi. Yeah. Yeah, it's got amazing healing. It's like a conqueror as, as a DD. Oh, oh, so I don't want to take home by, all by myself. That's no, no, you want to kill anything, anything that you can by yourself if you have the ability to. If, you, if you're not going to get radared or something, you want to try to find uh, find the enemies where possible. So, I think you're. So you might be on the coast. Azumo, but I think he's. I think he's just behind the island. Yeah. So there he is. Oh, help! 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 Shoot him! Zoom in, if you can. Don't yeah. smoke. Fight. Don't. Uh. Okay. So <laughs> when you're engaging a destroyer, um, well, I mean, hell, maybe you get the kills. The further out you are, the more floaty your shells are going to be, the less effective you are at dealing with small targets. You wanted to try to get closer before you smoked so that you could have more accurate guns on target. Good shots, by the way. Um, and Thanks. your smoke is also in a position where there's nothing else that you can shoot. So you smoked to keep yourself safe. That's cool. And because you're in a British ship, you have seven smokes. Well, you're down to four, so you still got shitloads of smoke. This is why it's a good training boat for a newer player. But if you had gone south maybe half a grid square, 
you had shots on the Yugamo until he fucked off, and then you could put shots into a cruiser that had moved in to sea or something. Like, you could continue shooting and using your smoke. Try to stay on the other side of the rock, because there's a bunch of bad guys on the left side. So, if we can be on away from them while trying to fight the Didi, that would be cool. Or, actually, you might end up working on the Johan here if you want to pop a smoke when it comes available and just start shooting. Don't You can't torp that. You can't torp it. Just use your guns and smoke. So he's lit by somebody else, and you've got all the time in the world to just shoot this dude. You might even want to use AP. Uh, British AP is actually pretty good. Don't drift out of your smoke. Good. Nobody's here to torp. No, no, no. Slow down, slow down. Just stop. Now, moving in your smoke screen is important, but for right now, let's consider, consider that an advanced tactic because move you you can either move or shoot 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 all the guns always shoot shoot I'm shoot checking <laughs> rpf i'm checking rpf make sure your gumo doesn't sneak up on me well wow, you have you have a limited shoot. amount of time so zoom in get the best shot possible can uh, you let's go you can pop your hydro that is sometime i get you gumo just want to talk to rush me so i'll be scared he might come from the island Hmm. I think he's still scared of the Fletcher, so most likely he's fucked off. Um, your smoke is almost back up. You do get to trip across him. Do me a favor. Can you zoom in more? Can you scroll your wheel forward? Cool. So, um, you need to get out. You need to keep pushing and try to get out. Cool. Just keep running. Just don't even get artistic with it. Get the fuck out. Don't die. Dying is bad. So don't worry about getting torps off. Just just run. Get out of Hydra range. I think he goes out to five clicks. Stop juking and turning. Just just go. Just go. Leave. <laughs> uh, too slow. Yeah, so... Okay, what happened there? You went down to the rock. To the map. No, it has nothing to do with the paying attention part. That was positioning error. So you went down to E8, and you were kind of in that island area. Well, one thing is, when you're going uh, to the island, you could have gone to the left, because you were pursuing the DD, right? If you go to the left of the island, when you were looking at it, that brought you closer to cruisers and guns that would shoot you in the face and kill you. If you go to the right of the island, you have an island between you and bad guys. So, which one of those is much safer? Ultimately, you stopped a little north of the island. You popped your smoke. You kind of farmed the Ohan a little bit. I don't know how many times you hit him, but you hit him some. In the future, you want to zoom in so that you have better shots. You can always just hit the, the right mouse button. That'll pull your view back so that you can look around. And you can use the trick that I told you about earlier, where you set your guns, you hold down that right mouse button, and then you just hold the left mouse button. And they'll shoot on their own. And you can just look around while your guns take care of whatever the fuck they're going to do. So you just set it, let it shoot, look around, feel good about life, check in every now and then just to make sure that the shells are still hitting, that the aim is still good, uh, because it's going to stay locked relative to the enemy ship. So if you shoot a little in front of the ship when he's moving forward, it's going to stay that way. As long as he keeps moving forward, the, the shells will keep going in the right spot. If he slows down, well, then suddenly you're going to start missing. So you do have to pay attention to it and adjust as necessary, but it gives you the ability to look, to move, to use your rudder and, and speed and all that shit while your guns take care of themselves. But after your smoke went down, your initial instinct was, fuck, 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 I got to move. Well, the first move you did was go forward, and going forward took you south toward the enemy. A Yugamo spotted you. You killed the Yugamo, which is good. It's good that the enemy DD is dead. But now everybody knew where you were, and a buffalo was able to just walk forward and actually not just radar you, but hydro you, which kept you locked up and killed. <laughs> You have a friend. Okay. Sorry. How dare you have friends? <laughs> this is the last one, I promise. 
last game? No, it is last friend. Oh, whatever. <laughs> so does last that one and no more. does that make no, sense? Yeah, I would just. I think that's my problem. Probably inexperience. It's like a dog with a bone. Well, that's one of the reasons why we're playing a British destroyer because a British destroyer gives you some ways out. If we'd gotten away from the buffalo, you still had heals. You could have healed up, you know, some of the damage you lost. If you got away from the buffalo, we still had smokes. One of the things is you said you had a really hard time playing the kid. Well, the kid has heals, which is nice, but it has like three smokes and they're all super long. So once you use a smoke, it's on cooldown for like the next four minutes or something stupid. So those are an, that's hard for a newer player because once you blow your smoke, you, you might get bored, reposition, do something else, and oh, fuck, I don't have this. Uh, whereas the British is going to be much more forgiving. Um, so likely this results in... What does this result I in? I, we have all the caps, really. Yeah. Well, having points is good. I think your FTG dies, because there are too many people shooting at him. But their Izumo dies. You might... Yeah, your team probably farms down the... It's 525 points ahead with all three caps. So I don't think... Well, two caps. I don't think we... Uh, caps? I don't think we lose because... Caps only matter until the enemy takes them back. But five minutes yeah. remaining. So the Sov goes down. Your Fletcher's getting nailed. Oof. Your Brindisi is extremely low and probably dies as well. Now they're on your Izumo. It's two battleships to one. So you might lose all three ships over in Charlie. Then you have an Oyster that can't push. A Neustrashimi and a Seattle. It's really close. Does the Seattle get murdered by the uh, battleship? Yeah. Uh, well, what's that Palmer cost here? Yeah, there's a Palmer, and that's probably like looking at that. Hopefully, he's still shooting at the uh, other stuff. Does the Seattle eat Torps and die? Yeah, he does. So your new Strashimi can't kill their DDs. So your Seattle is probably dead from the Palmern. But if the Palmern kills the Seattle, he's not killing the Brindisi. I think you lose this. Maybe. Well, your new Strashimi is using his guns, which means it's two people shooting against one and a Palmern, so the new Strashimi is going to be dead. He needs to smoke, but he's not. Your Brindisi it goes down to a single salvo from the Palmer or potentially some secondaries. You'll have an Oyster and an Izumo against two DDs. Well, if they don't push, I should win this. Do I have to use defense B? Which yeah, you guys dead. have enough of a point lead that it's probably okay. Just depends how long the Brindisi lives. Ooh, smoked up. No. Yeah. Bad. That's okay. Okay, so Azumo Oyster, if the Oyster charges forward so that he can get pwned by two destroyers, then he'll be dead. <laughs> um, and then it just comes down to points. <clears throat> yeah, I can't walk into the field of fire on that one. Me and my child didn't. Hmm. All right, well, um, do you have any thoughts, thoughts, team? comments, questions off this game? Well, I think the problem, like you said, actually I've gone to the safer side of the map, even if I have to reverse a bit. And then I'll, I'll be, well, I'll be safe on the gunfire, even if I get radared or hydroed. And then Javelin's, you know, quite slow, so I don't think there was any chance for me to uh, escape from that situation. I just put myself too close. Uh, yeah. Well, one, we're going to need to remember that we can set our guns, hold down right click, and then let our guns shoot while we're busy looking at other stuff and doing other things. Um, so that's definitely something to recall in a DD. Because um, if you're in smoke and you want to look around and stuff, that helps you. It gives you more, it frees up mental space for you to be able to look at other things. And yeah, there's always that. The closer you are to the bad people, the more likely they are to shoot you and kill you. So. After we smoked on the E-Line, 
there was option go away from the bad people or go closer to the bad people. We took option go closer and we died. So always got to keep that one in perspective. You are you are in a ship that has the has the least armor and the least health, which means you can take the least amount of punishment. And you'll see some you know extremely talented players that like to shoot their guns all the time they'll play 15 kilometers away from their enemy but that also means that you're not fulfilling the role of the destroyer as being that buffer between them and your midline if, if you can't play the front line because you're far back and you're shooting that can be an issue and uh, some people have that problem with the um, french destroyers the new german line likes to play back really far so it almost feels like you don't have a destroyer Okay, Oyster V D D. There's probably two of them. Does it get ganked? So we can see that the enemy destroyers are in mid, so... Good, he's running away. That is the best choice. Live! He might have RPF as well. One tap should, should be enough. Yeah, it's one minute. So one minute and... 530 points to the in the lead it doesn't matter unless both both of your ships die uh, well maybe a cheap on death flex <laughs> so. ooh, ooh, nice dodge woot well game one's a win so yay <laughs> okay i didn't screw up too much <laughs> it's good Nope, you went a little too deep and you paid the price for it. So in the future, yeah. you always have to remember, you know, there's an element of safety and you have to keep that in the back of your mind. Otherwise, you end up dead. By the way, thank you for the 10 months, Mirrodin. Yeah, we got this about 12 seconds. Mm. Okay, relative easy game for me. Less radar, not fast firing cruisers. Still. All right, do you have any questions about the ship or can we play it again? Well, we can play again. We can play this ship or other ships. Uh, let's stay on this. Instead of jumping around from here, there, and everywhere, let's try to focus in on learning a, a, a style. Every this single nice. ship plays different. Even yeah. if it's just a little bit of difference between this guns here, concealment there, whatever. Um, so yeah. every time you jump around from one ship to another, you're kind of relearning the game slightly different. Yeah, this is my, well, that was my third game. This is my fourth game in Java. Sure. Yeah. So there's a midway, so we will have to pay attention to bombs. Ooh. Rockets are probably not gonna be an issue. Same thing with torps. There are a lot of battleships. There are two radars. A Z-52 has a six kilometer hydro, so that can detect you even larger than your concealment. And a Kagero has a 5.4 detection. So very sneaky DD, hard to deal with. You might get bullied because of that. So where are you gonna go depending on the map? I think I'll go to go to C cap. In cool. the middle, might just get killed, especially with CV. Yeah, so that's definitely Straight possible. Whoa, 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 slow down. Go half speed, please. Half speed. Why I'm half? Some... Half yeah, speed. There... Half. Half speed. Half speed. There we go. Half. Because we're going to see where the CV is going, and the CV is going to either do one, a scouting run, or he's just going to attack something, which we know because we play CVs as well. So he might end up going after the Benson if he sees him. Probably won't. Drops a fighter. And depends on how hard he's going to charge up into those other ships. Nope, there's he's going to turn off, and that's going to be a scouting run. So because you're going a little slower, you're not just charging ahead. It's unlikely the rocket planes trip across you. You don't have to turn away. You don't have to hide from the rocket planes because odds are no, they I'm can't do shit to you. Um, <clears throat> you could actually contest Bravo. You could do that, but there's two Des Moines that have radar. So it's likely you might get radared from a Des Moines that's somewhere in the center. And with the short smokes, you might be able to keep yourself safe from uh, the CV temporarily, but it's not going to be a long-term thing. So he could camp you without support. Eventually your smoke runs out. 
Do me a favor, go into the little gear wheel and add on aerial detection. Oh, this, uh, 2.6. That's fine. It's just good to know. All right, so looks like there's a Z52 down there. We can help the Z52. He's currently being bullied by a CV because he did the first thing that DDs do, which is charge the fuck forward and go out in the middle of nowhere. And sure enough, he had a bunch of stuff on top of him. It's not the rocket planes that got the damage into him. It's all the damn shells that did. So he could have just let the scouting run go by, let him YOLO something, and then be able to start moving forward and expressing themselves. Although you surrender early map position if you do that. You're always making a choice between uh, of offense and defense. If you're choosing to be more defensive, you're being less offensive. We want to look at C. We need to look at C. But we do see that there's two destroyers down there. There's a Z-52 and another. So we also have to know that we might need to bail. So let's start turning to the right and kind of going a little more towards C. Uh, you may actually want to pop your hydro now as you're going in, just in case they threw some torps through the cap. Forward, 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 forward. You're going to be going toward the cap to give uh, information and positions, but understand that there's a Z-52 there, so you're going to want to actually start reversing toward the cap. Ideally, you'd be a little closer than this because that's a long distance, but this works okay. Oh, uh, I was going to hide behind Island to take some post shots. Okay. No, because you you are... No, 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 no. Well, all right. I'm just looking where the torpedo goes. Um, I'm going to do a circle and the try to reverse back in. Okay, so just remember that the Z-52 over there has a 6 kilometer hydro, so the closer you get, the more likely you get spotted in a really hardcore kind of way. So backing into the cap, definitely the correct move. Just make sure you don't get l locked up by that Z-52. Yeah, I was wondering where the ZF-6 was. No, there he is. Was he, how's he get? Oh, detected by airplane. So let's play safe. Because we want to get the ZF-6 detected. I think he's got like a 6 or 6.1 kilometer detection. You out-detect him. You need to be reversing into the cap. You need to not be nosing into yeah, the cap right now. I don't really want going to the cap, to be well, honest. Well, you need to start reversing into the cap so that you're using your concealment to bully your enemy. You're not worried yeah. about Hydra right now because the Z-52 is more than 6 kilometers away. And if you can light the ZF-6, you force him to smoke or you help your teammate shoot him. And I think the ZF Z-52 already blew his smoke for some reason. But this is one of the things that a destroyer can do. You can use your detection to out-detect the enemy. This is one of your offensive weapons. And if you went to hide behind a rock so that you could go farm something, you wouldn't be spotting for your team, which your Z-52 yeah, yeah, is not doing either. I wonder if the demon's back here somewhere. Near the destroyer. Oh, hello. So let's make sure we're not eating a torp. This might be embarrassing. Come on, turn. You turned a little early. Oh, come That's on. Fine. You turned early. Okay, heal. You have a heal. Use the heal. Don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. So it's really easy in a British destroyer to accidentally just rocket off into the distance because you accelerate so quickly. Don't shoot. You're capping. Once you know, prep press S3, but oh, there we go. Now I'm spotted. No, no, no! All right, well, it is what it is. So. <clears throat> Gotta go. Good night. They're rushing me anyway. Gotta go. Okay, so. Uh, freaking planes back, too. We can talk about juking, maybe, uh, in the next thing. All right, just just bail full speed at this point. You're leaving, so. Damage con, you're no longer detected. Okay, so we've taken a lot of damage. Now we have to play very safe. Um, the reason to be doing what we were doing before, where we were coming up to kind of bully, partially it was to take the cap, but partially it was to get information. We don't really have those options anymore. Now we're low enough in health that we're very vulnerable to planes. Second thing is, um, <clears throat> you have the ability to lurch forward 
on command because of how fast the uh, British DD is. Um, you want to be using the the possibilities of your movement to juke shells. So if you throw it in full forward as soon as you get spotted, where do people shoot? They shoot as though you're going full forward and then they hit you because that's what you do. One of the things you can do to juke shells is start to move forward and immediately stop because people are going to assume, well, fuck, it's a DD. As soon as he spotted, he's going to go full forward and they shoot ahead of you and the shells will miss. So you go full, uh -uh, nope, you stop. And then you start to move. And then you start to slow down again because they don't know how long you're going to go forward. Your ability to use your speed is going to place the shells not into your ship, keeping you kind of, well, alive for a little while. You are not in a good position. Getting closer to the enemy team makes you more or less dead. You are closer to the enemy team than anybody else on your team. You have very little health. So you need to be leaving, especially because there's what? A, is that a cruiser there in Bravo? Yeah, that's a demo in there. Can't go in there. Yeah, so what you need to do, well, there's a Shikishima, I think is what that is. I can't read what that is. No, it's a Shikishima and Demo in there too. Both cool. You need to leave. You need to not be here. <laughs> so you have 12 yeah, kilometer guns. Demo. You can use your guns. You don't have to be uh, five kilometers away for this. You could be back in a smoke screen shooting the Shikishima for free. If you swing out, he's going to detect you. I know. Oh, shit, there's there's island there. Island? Oh. You're not going to get anything with this torping stuff. You need to leave. <laughs> or smoke. <Time> to go. <laughs> now remember how extremely long it takes for you to stop. Yeah, there's nothing more. Well, you're detected. You might as well shoot. Uh, guns, 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 guns. Shoot them with the guns. <laughs> like, this I won't be able to reach him there. It's behind island. You could have shot the Shikishima in the face. <laughs> oh, he's dead already. Well, I, I know he's dead, but he would have been deader. Like, there's no reason not to take the shots for free. The sooner he's dead, the less he shoots your team. The sooner he's dead, the more health you guys have. It's just just shoot him <laughs> yeah i can't go in this one is uh not going to go well with all the caps no you all lost catch, i was hoping to catch catch a catch a, either the cruiser or the um, shikishima from behind with torpedoes but, well yeah. yes but why is that not a good move yeah it's a bit suicidal no well yes it's suicidal but why is it not a good move what about your situation made that not a good move? Yeah, I got no health left. You had no health. So if you turn the corner and while you're lining up the Shikishima shells, you took three or four uh, secondary hits, that might have been enough to light you on fire, break your torpedoes, and then suddenly you go down before you shoot. And then that would be embarrassing. Because you don't have the health. You took a torpedo, you took some gunfire, fuck, you know, it got you. Um, I actually... <clears throat> Uh, when it was Charlie, I think, I think you got hard spotted by the ZF-6 because he came around the corner and he was a 5.5 away from you. So I was concerned about you just full bailing, but there were also planes. So you were double spotted. It was a bitch. Um, you could have popped Ooh, smoke. Zero damage. <laughs> it is what it is. You could have popped smoke for a moment. You might have still wanted to leave, but you could have started moving, but immediately stopped through smoke, broken your detection, and then chosen how you wanted to go from there. Realistically, you probably still had to run because the Z-52 could have moved forward to Hydro you. Um, but it's about making decisions and not about reacting. Um, but I think we were we were still late at we were still late on the reaction at sea, so that's not on you, all on you because I didn't see it either. I was really hoping that the ZF-6 would be more open water as opposed to going over to the island and just try to run up and hard spot you. So shit is what it is. Um, yeah, can't eat a torpedo for no reason either. That is also a problem. And as soon as you started reversing in those torpedoes, you did the right thing. You, you stayed forward. in reverse. 
because staying in reverse at least keeps your momentum and once you reverse in a British destroyer, stopping sucks. But you needed to keep moving before you started that turn. You would have slotted into the open. You turned a little early, which is what got you into the torp. Yeah. It would be easier to just move forward. Well, there's that too. Maybe. You leave the cap, but I mean, <clears throat> it's the safer way to interact with it. So maybe that was the better choice. Uh, I didn't have a problem with the reversing part. It just, you didn't yeah. execute it. It is what it is. Yeah. yeah. Play again. Okay. Let's see if I can do more than zero damage this time. So ideally, your Z-52 was the one that was pushing up and doing all that shit, uh, but he didn't, so it fell to you. Well, <clears throat> the good thing is, I don't think um, my poor performance recently lost that game, so it's not so bad. <laughs> no, if, it was, I... if it was a very close game, that would be more upset, but this was kind of, a, you know... Yeah, all, all flanks game, lost. Really your Benson died bad. within like two minutes, or maybe three minutes. Um, and then, obviously, you didn't really have a way in on the other side, because they had a Z-52, so that's a lot of detection. The ZF-6 wasn't that scary, but, um... It, yeah, you, you can't win a game when you don't win any of the flanks, so... It is what it is. So, what is the... Play style of um, Jetland because the game the DD I played most recently is the um, Orkan. So basically, you try to ambush DD then just because I use the extended range mode. So it just basically open fire, open water gunboat from certain kilometers. Um, the Orkan is, is kind of an anti destroyer thing because <clears throat> it's going to have the heal and also a radar. So it can force a fight, trade, and then be able to heal itself to kind of put the enemy in a worse situation than it was in. All right, so we're looking. There's three destroyers. You don't have a destroyer on your side, so you are the destroyer on your side. So you don't get to run around just gunboating. Please move forward. What Please move this? forward. Please move forward. There we go. <clears throat> um, the enemy has a Jutland, so that's 5.7 detection. And then there's two Chung Moos which are, I think, just Fletchers, really. So also probably 5.7 as well. And they're in a div. No, they're not in a div. They're in different divs. So until you know where the enemy is, you have to play safe. What does that mean? That means being able to reverse into the cap to keep yourself at least mildly taken care of. Where the fuck is your mid going? They're going to the other side? Okay, well, uh, if you have even less resources, you have to play even safer. He who has more friends wins. You want to go directly to A. You want to get, you want to go in, because you want to be able to be at the top of the cap, the furthest away from your enemy, so that you can okay. bail. Okay. Well, my normal style is hang around outside the cap. Well, I, I guess, uh, understand, <laughs> but in this yeah. case, you are the spotting on this flank. You are the thing that gives the information. So you can go wide, but going wide delays the information for your team. And the longer it takes yeah. before you have a clue as to what the enemy is doing, the more likely you die. Pass the island, and as you're passing it, hard left. And go ahead and pop your hydro now. Just because it's been a minute and a half, so there could be torpedoes yeah. in the water. Hard left, hard left, hard left, hard left, hard left. You're going to be killing a U-turn, and you're going to start backing into the cap. Oh, come on, this thing don't reverse. Yeah, it's oh, it, yeah. horrendous handling. It's part of the British way, I guess. But now you do see that you're located. So let's not go full speed back. Uh, those are Chung Moos. Or that's a Chung Moo, because yeah, those are deep matter. water. Deep. Yeah. So maybe as you're reversing, occasionally go stop and then go back to reverse and then stop and then go back to reverse. Do they have any radars over there? I can't really see. Alaska. That's Alaska, 11 kilometers. Okay, so that's a potential coming, thing. Coming towards me at 10.5. Oh, hello. Yes. Just keep, nope, stop turning. Just keep moving. Yeah, oh, okay. I'm moving forward and turn. 
You're gonna accelerate oh into a torpedo. What's wrong with this boat? Yeah, it's alright, I think I got it. Okay. Also, Alaska's here had to bail, he's within 10 kilometers. No, 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 no. You want to be at 9.8 from the Alaska. If you have an option, well, because you want to know if the Alaska is going to blow his radar, in which case you can leave. Okay. So 9.9, 9.8, that's going to give you information. If he uses the radar, then you know his radar is down and you can start to play around it. Okay. Yeah. Other side. You are detected. Take the fight. Heal or smoke, smoke, smoke. Don't run. Do not run. Do not run. Take the fight. Smoke. Do not run. Take the fight. Smoke. Because when you run, when you run, the first thing that happens is you get further away. You're not able to take the fight. Now you can run. Now you can run. <clears throat> Slam on the brakes. Slam on the brakes. Slam on the brakes. Accelerate again. In case cruisers took long-range shots. <laughs> Don't shoot out the smoke? Well, okay, I mean, I guess if you want to try and long-range trade, you have a heal, which, by the way, you should be using. Get your heal going. Get your heal going. Just, at this point, just stop firing, because he's so far away, you're not going to hit. Um, <clears throat> just don't... One more, Okay. Okay. That, there's nothing that can shoot me from that side, anyway. If you feel comfortable being able to juke shells, sure, but now you have to wait an additional 20 seconds before you can move back up. So, you're surrendering information when you take that shot. Unless that shot is a god shot, oh man, you're just going to bitch slap this dude for 5,000 damage, you're telling the enemy where you are for another 20 seconds every time you fire. So, now you have to reverse all the way back to the cap to start to move in and get spotting and shit again. Unfortunately, it looks like your team over there, it's just down to two people. That's like 2v4. So there's really not very much that's going to happen with that. I guess you're heading over to the other side, which isn't going to be a bad idea, unless you want to try to brawl the Chung Mu again. No, I'll try to see if we can get A, because there's no sh... They, they don't have any radars over there anymore for, for another minute. Mm, no, no, don't don't go to A. Either try to kill the Chung Mu, which you have RPF on. You can try to charge this dude and make some plays here. But there's five yeah, five ships out on the too. one line, so you're going to grab A, they're just going to come over and take it from you anyway. Like, try to have an objective here. Every shot needs to hit. Every single shot needs to hit. Pay attention to where you're shooting, make the shots matter. Wait, what? No, no, he don't be afraid to juggle your speed. Yeah, I'm just... Well, yeah, it doesn't afraid of. And you can always smoke. You can smoke right now and just disengage if you want to. That's something you can do in no. the British line. So no, those two battleships, they don't have... Shoot! Yeah. Sorry, no, you smoke, to, uh... smoke, smoke, smoke now, smoke, smoke now, smoke now. Now you're not detected. Once your smoke effects, then you can start to reverse and do something on the cap if you wanted to pressure it. Otherwise, leave. So the operation for coming back here was either to kill the Yugamo or you wanted to cap A. Capping A is not going to matter because the enemy ships are going to take it. But giving them free information, you know, you used your guns, you did the thing, cool. You saw them taking shots at you still. You have seven smokes, you can rapidly burn through them. I don't think you can save the Izumo. I mean, you can try to torp across there, which wouldn't be a bad idea if you want to play that way. You could s move across. I'm trying to think of, like, where you can make plays on this map. I'll try to delay them at uh, the one line with torpedoes, hopefully. I still got enough health. I have no DD support in there. So cool. One radar. That sounds useful. You could do that. You could throw torps of the advancing line. Sure. You still have a San Luis out at a distance. So uh, worst case, if all you're doing is still spotting, that's going to be useful. They'll turn in because there's not much oh, yeah. for them to chase. I'll just fire one off and then save another rack for later. I mean, I can even open what a gun boat. No, just to... no. You would not do that from eight kilometers away. You would do that from 12 to 15 no, kilometers away against big ships. 
Makes me look pumped up, don't it? Hello? So I can't see what's close to you. Is that in Alaska? Yeah, 6.6. .6. I'm running out of here. Yeah, so now as soon as he sees your torpedoes, he might be... Island. He might radar... No, 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 no. Have the island as an out. Don't hide behind the island as a default. You want to be giving oh, no. information to your team. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he sees me. Don't hard turn for the island. You need to juke Alaska shells. Oh, yeah, Jesus. Going down. No, turn, asshole. Oh, hello. Get your heel running. Occasionally speed up, occasionally slow down. Occasionally speed up, occasionally slow down. Don't give him free shots. Smoke, 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 smoke. The, radar. the radar is about to go down. Smoke, get the smoke going. There's a lot of them. There's one of you. Don't let them, don't help them kill you. Second radar. Is that a Chung? Oh, Chung Mu has radar. Great. Does it, don't shoot, just run. Don't shoot, just run. The radar does not last very long. Slow down. Now you can go forward. Well, they tracked you. I think that was the Chung Mu was taking the shots. <clears throat> oh well. The closer you are to the enemy, the more likely you're dead. You got closer to the enemy because you wanted to torp them. You got dead. The closer you are to the enemy, the more likely you die. So, all right, what happened? Let's kind of review the battle while this is all playing out. Uh, looking at health, you probably don't win because they have more health than you do. But the first thing you went to do or went to was A. Cool. You got to see there was a Chung Mu there. There was also another DD because you juke those torps as well. That's fine. You had some interactions there. Cool. Um, ultimately, your team left the A flank. You had two cruisers, I think, that bailed on A. So you had two ships behind you and you. They had five or six ships on that flank. Are you going to win the flank or are you going to lose the flank? Ah. <sighs> Don't think I was able to win that one. Sure, but just as a basic understanding, six ships versus yeah. two ships, six ships versus three ships, who wins? Well, they do most majority of the times. Sure, because there's six of them and there's three of you. So the things that you're going to be looking for is one, you can absolutely exert pressure because DDs are scary. So if you go over to A, you reverse, you get eyes on stuff, whatever, that potentially slows down their push because they're, oh, fuck, there's a DD here. I don't want to get torped. They may not, you may never throw a torp in, the, in your entire game. The fact that you exist makes people scared that they're going to eat torps. So you express the fact that you're here, you step on the cap a little bit, they deal with that, and then potentially you fuck off and run away. The real question is, how do your team, what does your team do? So realistically, in the 3v6 flank, you wanted to see your battleship kind of point his nose out so they'd be ready to run. You wanted to, I mean, the San Louis is playing well. He's kept himself safe this entire game. So if you were in a situation where you could kite out, you could kite out together. Now there was a point after, I think you got radared at A, where it was like, you were trying to figure out where to go and what to do. Well. So the San Luis was playing safe. That dude was doing fine. Your battleship had decided to nose into, I think, five ships, which meant he can't turn out because he'll just get broadside bitch slapped and murdered. So he was committed. He was dead. Can you get between him and the enemy and save his ass? No. So you can't help there. You could help spotting for the, the San Luis and maybe throw torps as the enemy ships move. This is possible, which is kind of what you set up to do. Or... You could have just said, fuck it. A is screwed. I'm not going to waste my time here. Gone to B and then gone through to Charlie. Because there are enemy ships that were at Charlie. And if you were able to attack and interact with them, the sooner they're dead, the sooner your team recognizes that there's, hey, there's there's more to this map than just, just C. What the fuck is this? And they start to turn over and potentially go through B and help fight the, the A team, so to speak. The five enemies that are over there. You got to go where you're useful. You could have also, instead of going into Torp, you could use your guns. 
you could have moved away, you know, you could have been at 10 kilometers from the Alaska, so you could bait radar a little. You should be faster than the Alaska, I think. Maybe not. Um, it might be similar. British DDs are not very fast. But if you were at that 10 or 12 kilometers and they were shooting at your St. Louis, then you could just pop smoke and you could sh uh, shoot them with shells. Your guns are great on the British line. Do not be afraid of your guns. Uh, there was another thing where I think when you tripped across the Chengmu, your initial reaction was to run. Um, you want to take a fight as long as it looks good to take a fight. And while there were four ships on the other side that could be taking shots at you, and I believe they did, um, they may have also been in the middle of farming in Azumo and not given a shit about you. So it's kind of feeling out the situation. Worst case, you have a smoke. Um, hopefully this resolves soon and we can play again. Ugh. Hmm. Actually, could my win this if I could take down that BVs? No. 34k health to 120. Your shit dies before their shit does. I mean, six minutes. They might all hide, though. Well, I, okay. So it's a Chungmu. You have, Chungmu, you Iowa, have no Iowa health. Definitely, <laughs> Iowa doesn't really matter. I mean, they can't chase. I mean, I guess that's true, because the, if the Iowa goes forward, he gets torped from, like, three different angles. So he probably just sits there. Chungmu takes a fight against the Fletcher. Fletcher's still got decent health. Also, has Guanagan as well. Fletcher's dead. Oh, I would take shit. shots as well as the uh, the Chungmu. So, Six, Flet Fletcher's one, dead. The Chungmu five. knows what he was doing. I mean, we played against oh. him. He had a clue. Okay. Yeah, the gods to helps. What's the what's what the think? thing in the middle? Is that a Gronigan? Gronigan, yeah. It's okay. A, Gronigan helped. Woot. They yeah. Uh, what was it before the Friesland? Your Fletcher has like 400 health? It doesn't matter. Iowa can't do anything anyway. I don't think. You can't really push a tap. The Gronigan wants to shoot. Oh, he has 120 something health. <laughs> Your Fletcher is almost dead. Oh, yeah, he's running away. <laughs> so <laughs> he's going to another map. No, Chungmu got mm. the jump on him. The battleship shells came in. Should have gotten the kill on there. But the Gron again saved his ass. Yeah. Why are yeah, they why are they it. pushing? Oh. This is silly. Does Drake have torpedoes? Uh Drake does have torpedoes, yes. Mm -hmm. But he also has a twenty five millimeter nose, so the Iowa could just oh, yeah. shoot him off the face of the earth. Okay, if the Iowa hard turns or hard pushes, the Drake could get torps into his side. Is he proxy detected? No, not yet. No, but there are the torps away. But he cuts in, so that's not an issue. I think he might be proxy spotted now. Ooh, shoot a buffalo. Can you see the buffalo? Oh, yeah. So now the Gronigan dies. Because he's too close to miss. Uh, oh. Guns are turning on the Iowa, so the Drake might get, might get salvoed. It depends how many guns he has left. Did he shoot with one gun, or did he shoot with both of the front turrets? Oh shit, this all turning. So this could be a citadel up the ass. <laughs> it could potentially be two citadels up the ass. It depends on how that goes. Oh, he's shooting HE. So Drake lives with 300 health until the secondaries kill him. He does not have torps because yeah. he used those already. Hey, look, there's another kill. Ooh, the Fletcher. Oh, good. The Farragut Ooh. has decided. The Fletcher has decided oh, to help out. Great. Dead. What the and fuck did I just witness? You, you watched a bunch of people with no health fight an Iowa that had all the health. The Iowa well, nutted the fuck we, up and killed everybody. At least we have, uh, we have a, uh, a VIP. Yeah, he actually knows how to play. Yeah. So let's oh. watch the buffalo die, because that's about to happen. And there he is. Okay, he's down. So is you'll... that Kraken? Oh, almost. Yeah. <laughs> Just killed. So you should probably save this replay for Jingles because I'm sure he will enjoy this. <laughs> One buck. Okay. Well, at least we have a you know a star player. Compliment him. Where is it? 
You should probably compliment the San Louis as well. Oh, I did. I compliment San Louis and Iowa. Cool. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Iowa has a potential solo warrior. He would if the uh, San Louis also suicided himself, but the San Louis did not. Although, oh, the San, if the Iowa and... somehow like catches vision on this, I don't think he can. I think the San Louis doesn't have the... I think he's safe. His detection shouldn't be that big. But that would be funny. That would be pretty hilarious. But no, he's playing too well. So, two caps to one. You have a point lead. Minute 45 in the game. You guys take this. But uh, not for lack of trying <laughs> by your teammates. How much health do I have? 50? I'm good. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> Hello, Russian one by one as well. Just, if all Russian together, I mean, like if a Fletcher talk, the Drake talk, the Buffalo, you know, the, just chime in with a pin HE. That's all words. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a minute left. Uh, so basically, I have no idea. So normally, I don't contest caps. So, okay, part of the contest there was oh, more oh, information. Much stuff going on. Like I said, the chum was shooting me and then crossed the one, two line level. Those ships just keep looking that direction. Yeah. That's why I turned around because I, I turn around so I'll give a, doesn't give a, a bossa angle against those world, those ships are two line. So, yeah, I think well, there's too much going on there for me to process. That's part of destroyer play. Uh, you're you're going to make a lot of decisions. A lot of them are going to be wrong. Um, and that's the same thing for me and probably the same thing for everybody that's not played uh, 6,000 or 10,000 destroyer battles. Uh, there's going to be <laughs> a... 300. Well, yeah. So a lot of what you do, just like in a CV, is going to turn into muscle memory. You don't have to think about aiming when you've done it 10,000 times. You don't have to think about boost usage. Oh, buddy. Okay, okay, time's out, it's fine. I was Whew. like, no, don't be that guy. <laughs> Yay, okay, let's play it again. Let's see what score he got. He must be the top. That's not top. Mm -hmm. Interesting. The Gronigan? Whatever, I yeah, guess. Top the, of my team as well. The power of greed. <laughs> Okay, battle on. So, like, there's there's a lot in this game that's going to become muscle memory. There's a lot that you just kind of figure out by feel. Your positioning, your concealment usage, your all that shit is going to be muscle memory. Right now, you don't have any of that because you're you're still figuring out what are you even supposed to fucking do. So it's okay. You're gonna die. You're gonna lose. But we're trying to. We're trying to look at it in the frame of reference of what could we do, what should we do, you know, what are our options, what are the best options to take? Because there's always a lot of different things you could do. The question is finding out what you should have done. All right, so Yugamo has 5.5 kilometer detection, so that outspots you. Benham is either 5.6 or 5.7, I think. Could be 5.8. Either way, it's similar to you. Fletcher is the same. Uh, Oyster is uh, 6 kilometers, so you outspot that. You are one of the destroyers in the center, and we'll continue uh, to challenge you here by having you play in the center. So the question here, there's two ways to play uh, this, is either one, you can open water, which is probably the better choice, uh, because you have you know so many smokes that you can pop, or two, is you play off an island. Uh, if you were a Z-52, if you had a crazy-ass Wonder Super Hydro, maybe you'd play off the island that's in the center, but I don't think you have to do that. So what we could do instead is kind of play in that mid area. Again, you're going to want to have your bow kind of pointed away from the enemy because when you are bow into a situation, it takes you X amount of seconds to be able to hard turn and get the fuck out. You're exposing your side while you're hard turning, which means you're going to take a bonus damage and um, it can be rough. Whereas if you've already gone through the turning to where your bow is roughly out, you can always run away if you have to. And right now, how much information do you have about the enemy team? None. So, because of that, you want to be in a position where you give yourself an out. Now, yeah, one of your outs is island. the fact that you have a smoke screen. No, no, no. Don't, don't, not the island. No, because if you go to the island, you don't see anything. You're not giving your team information. If you're a cruiser, 
you can use an island. Why? Because you need to be able to be safe and not dead. You are in a destroyer. Oh. Part of your job is putting yourself in danger to give your team information. It seems the closest ships to me is behind island too. Great. Could well, then move in a place where you can see behind the island. <laughs> move over like one grid square, but still be in the in the center. Like you could go south about a grid square and then start to turn out and point your bow at like two o'clock on a clock face. So worst case, you just slam on the gas and you haul ass behind a rock there or something. You can break line of sight, or of course you could just smoke. You could also uh, turn a little harder and slow down and start to reverse backward to give your team information on the mid, which is probably what we're gonna do. So how about we'll do that? We'll just start to reverse here and give information. Looks like your Fletcher decided to use a smoke screen to do nothing. So now he's got the safety of a smoke screen while nobody shoots at him and gives a shit. Cool. Can he actually see something to shoot at? Maybe he's shooting at whatever no. that is. I can't uh, read what it is. Missouri, about 14 kilometers. All right, well, maybe he's able to farm the Missouri, so at least he's able to do something with that. Hello. So we're going to keep trying to get some information. RPF is on the island, so we have a heads up for that. We still have a smoke screen if we need it. So just keep on keeping on. You're doing the thing. Remember you have a smoke if you have to. Good, you see some torps. That's nice to know. Ideally, you'd be a little wider off the island because you're not going to be able to kind of see around the edge of it. I think there's a term, pie the corner. There we go. Okay, cool. So how far is he from you? I can't see. 8.6. 8 He's detected by something else. Oh, yeah, okay. He's running away too. Bandams here, see so many torpedoes. You can torp the battleship? You can torp the Missouri? Oh, yeah. No, not single. No. Throw a rack of five. You have no idea where this dude's gonna go. Yeah, Alright, well, he's turning off, so you don't even have to worry about that. You could start to engage the Yugumo if you felt like popping a smoke, but I don't think you're gonna get anything on him. So, I don't know if that's really the play. Just, just don't. Don't do it. No, no, no. Stop going forward. Don't go forward. <laughs> Why would you go forward there? What's the use for going forward? Well, who keeps him spotted after you start farming him? Granted, he's not spotted now, but who's spotting him? Like, there's a cruiser, I think, in the north a little. And he's shooting at people. Oh, hello. He's bailing. Fletcher. What is that, Neptune? Uh, no, it's a Fletcher coming in. He's gonna, oh, he's dead anyway. Why is the Missouri even spotted? He's coming this way, you see? Ah, who cares? I'm not gonna talk his ass. Don't get closer. 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 Don't get, Don't get closer. Don't get closer. Don't get closer. Don't get closer. Now you can shoot the Yugamo because you're lit. Shoot the Yugamo because you're lit. Shoot the Yugamo because you're lit. Every time you've gotten closer, what's happened? You've died. So let's play around your concealment range. Let's try to take fights at around six kilometers. Not four, not three, not five. Six kilometers. That's where we're trying to take fights. Your ship has a 5.7 detection radius. That's what you want to use. This is not this is not further away from the enemy. This is closer. You are pointing your yeah, nose at I'm the just, enemy while going forward. I'm just waiting for the radar to die off so I can hide behind island for a bit. You don't have to hide. There's no radar. You just leave. Oh no, there was lost radar, so hoping to hide from the shells using the island. That, uh... This is closer. You're gonna yolo oh, him. No screen. Well, this is no screen. So hoping to. Oh, hello. What's this? Whatever. Just yolo him, because that's what you're gonna do. Just commit to it. You got full health. Charge forward and torp the Missouri. No, no, no. Don't run away. Charge forward. Commit to it. Commit to the bit. Damn it. Bow in. Charge the motherfucker. Throw torps into him. Make him dead. There's gonna be two yeah, destroyers pushing. that are gonna start shooting you once you do. But if he's dead, then you can pop a smoke screen at least. AP, shoot him in the ass. AP, shoot him in the ass. You don't have torp lines yet. Use your guns. 
No, now you can torp. You. No, it came to a smoke. Shoot! Right, oh, come on, man. Stupid. Missed. Whatever. He's probably dead. Get ready to fight the DDs. We don't know where the destroyers are. What's up in the north? Battleship up in the north? Uh, yeah, the Pronto, Promo. This uh, Neptune, 9 kilometers, so... I yeah. think he's paying attention to me, but I can farm him from here. So, I might Hydro be up soon. Oh, come on. Can you look at the thing in the north? How healthy is the thing in the north? The Pronto is 7, 7k health left, Pomo's full health. Bandom just got spotted at 7 point. I will get go after the Bandom. Wait, I'm, I'm going to stay here just in case there's torpedo coming on this side of the island. I no, the, there's something yet. in B3. Yeah. What is in B3? Um, Alsace. Does it have health? No, it's really low. I'm going after the Bandom. Because then he just fired like, my hydro up. Okay. He's about seven kilometers away by away from me. Alright, well you got two little DD bros, so I think he's bow in. Stay on him. Turn, turn. You don't turn. have to turn, you don't have to run away. You can this, take this, this fight. Neptune. Well, okay, angle to the Neptune, I guess, but make sure you take the fight. You want this de you want a kill here. You have health you can trade. You can make something happen. Yeah. Smoke. You can start to smoke here. You can smoke here. You can smoke here. Keep shooting. Keep shooting. Keep shooting. Keep shooting. And you're going to want to start moving because the venom's going to torp your smoke. Just make sure that you don't go... Uh... Okay, cool. So you're juking those torps. You're fine. You can just fire. You can free fire. Yeah, all the kills. Cool. All the deads. All the kills. Push. Push the smoke. Push the smoke. Push the smoke. Push the smoke. You have Hydro Advantage, you'll light them while they're in smoke. You still yeah. have two destroyers that can help you fight this. Watch the torps. Most likely the Benham is bailed because he got his second rack in. There's a kill for you. He's Let's dead. see if we can find the other one. You can use the smoke screen. Oh, he's not dead! Because <laughs> you missed. Lead him correct. Oh. Shoot, shoot, really? shoot. Kill the Benham, kill the Benham, kill the Benham, kill the Benham. Oh, he finished. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. How did I... Um, did I... Let me see, I just want to see something. Yeah, that's pretty bad. What? Hit rate. The 120 shell fired, 29 hits. <laughs> One thing that I can recommend for uh, gunnery is actually co-op. Because um, the DDs mostly move forward, so you start to learn how you have to lead as far as angles and shooting and stuff. They're not gonna. Wonder, they're not gonna super juke. Uh, no, finish the Jatland. It's getting close. Feel like I'm getting close, but just learning to be short. I well, wonder if a Jatland shell would be slower than Oaken, because like I said, I haven't played Jatland for a long time. Uh, possibly. Game before today. Whatever, whatever you your aim is, because you're naturally gonna it's aim somewhere. Bad. Add more. So aim how you naturally aim, and then add a little more. Just want to check something. Is seven four six. Where's the Oaken? You don't understand why the heel had to wait that long? Heel had to wait that long. This booster was wondering if you could have healed earlier, I guess? Uh, yeah, I could, but just, just didn't see the need to do a good big AR in. Yeah, it's, it's 774 for the Orkin and it's a little bit slower for Jalen. I think I'm leading it a little bit short. Yeah, it's just, well, you are leading it short because most of your shells yeah. hit the absolute tail of the ship. So, whatever you're shooting, just lead a little more. Uh, that's what I have to do in the Japanese ships. I aim like I want to aim, and then I add more. Go ahead, play it again. All right. I mean, this is we're not trying to make you a Jutland specialist. We're just trying to give you DD experiences, no. and we're going to keep yeah. the DD the same so that we have the same experiences. Maybe you should drop down a couple of tiers back to the T61. <laughs> Less pressure, just a bit. Um, slower pace. Uh, booster, I don't think that was an intentional choice for Adrenaline Rush. I think it was just over being overwhelmed. There's yeah, too much... 
there's too much stuff okay so just for those that are in chat um it's always worth remembering that as people get used to the game you get used to the feel of the heels you get used to the feel of the guns used to the positions used to the movements all that stuff but to a newer player that's still figuring it out they're trying to figure out how to do 10 different things at the same time instead of having eight of them on autopilot so right now they're going to be errors in play there's i mean there's going to be shit i don't see i'm not a dd main so there's definitely going to be shit i don't see mm -hmm. um so my apologies for any time where my skill or whatever is lacking because that's definitely going to happen if and i know it's happened several times already um okay where can we go we have two jetlands and uh what is the other ship akatsuki yes okay uh, a, yeah tour build most, i'm not sure all right well it looks like you picked the uh bravo cap or delta god i can't see no, anything delta. delta cap cool all right, well that's cool. So, uh, Jutland has woken and up. That's you nice. Want me to go down the middle with a CV in play. No, not at all. Yeah. So there is an enemy Lexington, so you have to pay attention to that. Um, rockets are not going to yeah. be scary because you could juke them, but that doesn't mean you want to give the information for free. Yeah. You're fine. He blew a fighter. That's a weird He's fighter position. Me anyway. And he left to the other flank, so you can just charge D. Get yourself in position. What do I have? There's a Neptune's bit scary. Fleet, you probably don't have the range. It's had less range than me. Yeah, Neptune's only scary if you're uh, if you're not angled to him, because you can bounce a lot of shells even with your shitty armor. The Ultra Cove. I think that I think that has a radar. radar. Yeah. So until we know where the, oh, I can't. I can't see what's on your screen. I don't know what um, what the enemies are at D. I, there's nothing stuff. Sharp yet. There's nothing sharp. There's Neptune. That's uh, from 15 kilometers. Nagato, 17 kilometers. Cool. But look at those are baby. So you get to do something. You get D. to do something you did not get to do in other games. You have an Akatsuki, and the Akatsuki is going to spot, which means you can actually start to go uh, gunboat, which means you could pop smoke Ooh, and you can shoot. Help, help! 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 Help your DD. Lead more, lead more. Remember, lead a little more. Whatever you're leading, lead a little more. Hmm. And you're dark, because there's literally just nothing here. But unfortunately, your That's Akatsuki got wrecked. Um, yeah, I need two hits. All right, I'm going to charge him anyway, since I have okay. a backup. They have no backups. Uh, no, you don't have backup, because your Brindisi is bailing, your Akatsuki is bailing. But you can still charge him. You could still take the fight. We see a whole bunch of ships, and none of them are over here. So yeah, you could definitely do this. Flash him, flash him out with torpedoes first. Throw both racks and just charge him. Throw both racks and charge him. Oh, already turned. Yeah. So this one rack thing, it's good for pacing it, but uh, uh whatever. The there's there's pluses and minuses to both of it. But one rack is a pretty thin rack, so take your shots, run them down. His smoke is down. You still have your smoke. If you're going to smoke, you need to be going half speed. Just stay zoomed in. Yeah, get the shots. Get the shots. Get the shots. Don't don't in and out on this one. Him. He's probably going to smoke because he's beached. Good movement on the throttle with forward and backward. Just stay on him. Just stay on him. Okay. Cool. Smoke. Well, you don't even have to because there's nothing here to spot you. So, and now your radar. Just stay mm. bow into the Neptune, and you'll bounce most of the shots. Make sure you're speed yeah, juking. Just... Slow. Okay, slow down. Between. Slow down. Hello. Remember, the closer you go to the enemy, the worse it is. Yeah, I'm running away now. Heal, 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 heal. Ooh, this is not fun. Yeah, so the closer you are to the enemy, the more likely you die. Smoke, 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 smoke. Cool. Keep running, keep running, keep running, keep running, keep running, keep running. Get away from the enemy. <clears throat> hey, got it. Oh, I'm, I'm glad shot. you got the kill. I don't want you to die. So, 
You have no health. You are not, under any circumstances, going to go any closer than 10 kilometers to any enemy on this ship. You're never going to torp anything for the rest of this game, ever. You don't have torps. They're broken. They're gone. They're, they don't even Stumble exist coming. now. All you have are guns. You have guns and smoke. That's all you have for the rest of this match. Yeah, somebody's coming for the middle. Mm, not got no smoke. What is that? Lenny grad. Cool. So I have no smoke. I won't be able to take on his full health. Good. Well, then don't shoot him. But be in a position where you can help. Move, 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 move. No, you don't have torps. You, your torps are broken. They don't exist. You're going to get in a position where you can shoot this asshole. And then once you have smoke, you can shoot this asshole. Heal, heal, heal. Come on. Why am I going this way? What? It? No, I'm just keep making keep him lit for now. Oh, sh Smoke <laughs> and shoot him. Smoke and shoot him. Smoke and shoot him. Then you guys pretty fast. Oh, that's right. Even better, he's dead. Awesome. <clears throat> so for the rest of this match, you do not have torpedoes. You never get closer than six. You're going to be shooting at people from like 10 kilometers away because that's your life now. You don't have health. So at this point, it's not about what you can do. It's about how can you help safely. Cool. Are there any radars down there? Mm, no, oh. I think that's not a radar, no. That's cool. it. Cool. So you can be the destroyer that helps your push on the southern flank, but you cannot get close. So. Is George going to the middle? No, no, no. Just, mm. just go south. There's a ship that you're looking at right now. You can eventually shoot at it, but you will not get close to it. You're going to be like eight to 10 kilometers away, being able to help assist with long range fire using your smokes. You cannot take any close engagements. You can't get close to shit at all. You want to be 10 kilometers away from everything so that you can shoot safely. Okay. Stay a bit further from Ireland. Since they, actually, no, they have no, they have no, this is a DD. Oh, other side, it's fine. So, King George, no, let's copy this way. Uh, you might be able to farm over the island for free. Probably yeah. can. You don't have to... Well, yeah, okay. So you're obeying the 10 kilometer thing, which is cool. Just make sure that uh, you're safe and with whatever you do. And remember that uh, British destroyers slow down really slowly. I think it's just avoiding the CV rather than coming this way. Uh, CV's busy doing other shit. Yeah, okay. Drop a tool. Slow down and shoot. There we go. Don't be afraid to use your smoke when eventually you get there. So look on the mini map. You see where that X is? The X yeah. is past the ship. You want it on the ship? I realize you want to be hitting superstructure, but you want to hit the ship first. So. The little X on your mini map, you want to put that on top of the ship. You want to lower your aim a little so it's right on the ship. And if you just shatter everything, well, then you can move it up a little bit. But you're going to need to use your mini map so that you get these shots. You're still overshooting. You need to go down more. Down more, just a little. Down a little more. Down a little more. There we go. That's where you wanted it to be. And you can throw AP if you want, because you have a fair amount of broadside you can shoot into. Oh, yeah, that's true. He's dead anyway. Well, yeah, but it's still nice to shoot him. Cool. So you have two caps. They still have a bunch of ships. You have some. You have no health. You have to play scared. You don't have any heals left. Cool. You can support your Amagi. So your Amagi is going to be able to spot for you, and you're going to be able to fire from smoke clouds. So get your HE loaded, you're already doing it, great. 
and you're going to be in a position to just try to set fires on shit. <laughs> so I'm just looking at chat. Is it 12.5? Okay. I'm going to shoot him now. You could open water gunboat this if you want to. It's unlikely that yeah. the battleships are going to go crazy for it. You're spotted. What are you spotted by? Oh, then you the shot. I'm shooting him from 11. I, I didn't see you shoot. The screen is kind of blurry. So yes. I was like, uh, is there a DD up your ass? And I just got kind of scared. Um, actually, no, you want to stop. Happens, you want to stop. You want to stop completely dead in the water. Because if you're going full speed, the enemy knows how to lead you. Why? Because you're going full speed. You could slow down, but that's two two options of how to shoot you. You either shoot full speed or they shoot slowing down. If you're stopped, you can go forward, you can stay still, or you can go backward. That's three different choices for them to be able to miss you. You could also yeah, go half speed if you want. Half speed works because you could speed up, stay the same, or go slower. And then, of course, you can also smoke. I don't think he's looking at you, so yeah, it's just free shooting and shit. Cool. There's another one you can start farming. So as long as you've got range on your side, you don't necessarily have to smoke up. Of course, it'd be the safer option. But against a battleship that's only going to fire once every 30 seconds, if he's trying to shoot, if he's trying to snipe a DD at 12 kilometers, it likely ends up in just being a wasted shot. So he's very likely to shoot the stuff he can hit which is not you, so Ooh, yay AP free damage. Yeah, British AP is uh, is a highlight of the line. The uh, HE actually is not. It used to be so weak that it couldn't pen a destroyer with outside of uh, IFHE. So if you have the option to use AP, it's definitely a good choice for damage on the British DDs. But, um, I mean, you're going to use whatever you're going to use. You just need to get the hits. Yeah. Oh, Flint. Actually, I think Flint's only got 12.3 kilometers. Now you can HE the Flint, because the Flint has a horrible, horrible shelf life time. The chance that he's going to hit you is extremely small. You can, of course, smoke. You have that as an option. Looks like he's going to smoke instead. Hold down the right mouse button and aim directly. Well, okay. So if you aimed directly at where he no, was... No, he's shooting me. I have to try to juke, but he's not going to hit me. So if you, if you aimed directly where he was and then held down the right mouse button, if you were stopped then you're locked on to his current position. Okay, so here, hold on, right mouse button. What well, about, are you getting closer to danger? It looks like you're getting uh, closer to danger to me. But he has no radar. I don't but care, I you need to stop spicy. shooting because you're getting closer to danger. Being dead sucks, don't be dead. Rule number one in a destroyer, don't fucking die. Rule number two in a destroyer, no really, don't fucking die. Rule number three in a destroyer, I'm fucking serious bro, don't fucking die. Rule four and five are the same. After you get through the first five rules of destroyer play, then you start getting into the advanced stuff. <coughs> okay. Dang it, life. You slay you. Can I shoot the John Paul? It's coming back. You can't shoot that. Do not shoot it unless you're in a smoke screen. You do not ever want to reveal yourself when you're six kilometers away from a flint. Because oh, yeah. the flint is in it's smoke and he's nice and safe until he comes out of the smoke screen because he's like, fuck it, I'm going to kill this DD before I die. Well, I think he's going to reverse. I don't know, since the DD is pushing him. It would be nice if your torps get him. Maybe I can. I can't see those. Nah. He's here. You he's can dead. shoot the battleship. Oh, he's dead. He's dead. Now you can oh. shoot the battleship. It's just like Jesus and the Ten Commandments. Don't be a douchebag, don't be an asshole, don't be a prick. Only in a DD, all ten of them. Don't die. <coughs> Smoke. Ooh, wrong button. That's not Because at this close, you may actually have... Uh, I mean, he might be secondary spec, but a Jean Bard actually has a reload booster. He might be willing to take shots at you. You need to move around in your smoke a little bit. Just remember that as soon as you move forward, your sh your shoot ship is going to just rocket forward. And also remember that once your smoke goes down, you have a 5-7 detection. So 20 seconds from now, he might be close enough to murder you. You need to start being ready to kite out. I don't think it will leave longer than 20 seconds. 
might not, but you still have to plan for the eventuality. A yeah, big, big part of playing a destroyer on a front line is knowing what your out is. Mm -hmm. uh, well, nothing much left to do. Uh, yeah, it's pretty over at this point. So we just uh, measured aggression is what we're looking for. No hellish rush into the camp. Yeah, so you are a gunboat. And you are, you are effective out to 12 kilometers. Your shell velocity is fine. You can land shells consistently and accurately all the way out to your maximum range of 12.5. So maybe not against a destroyer because they're going to wiggle and juke and jive and all that shit. But against battleships, absolutely. Against cruisers, yes, probably as well. So the reason you're playing close in your destroyer when it's early is because the enemy destroyer is going to bully which means you have to bully back. You have to be able to brace against their frontline push by providing a frontline of your own. The cruisers can't do it. The battleships can't do it. Because if the battleship charges forward, then he's just gonna get shot by everybody, torped by the DD, and probably just die like a chump. If the cruiser does it, he gets citadeled by everybody and get torped by the DD and dies like a chump. So you are the person that's holding the frontline as long as you can until you get to a point where you can't and you took a lot of damage and you could not anymore. And that's why I started telling you, torps don't exist, blah, 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 all that shit. And what did you do? You played safe, you lived to the end of the match, you got to shoot some stuff, you got to cap some stuff, you got to interact and play, you didn't give the enemy team points for free, which is good. So use your health to take map advantage, map position, uh, bully as you can, but as your health goes down, you play more and more and more safely as a result of that. Play again. Yes, I think I, yes, I think I understand the steps to juggle now. Well, in theory. You will, as it all makes sense while you're in class and then you get home to do the homework and you're like, oh, motherfucker, what was that again? How do, how do I put the, so it's it's all it's all just constant repetition playing it over and over again feeling it out and the more that you you learn stuff the more your body automates it for you and you don't have to think about it you just do it and the more the more this shit gets automated and the less you have to think about that stuff the more you can think about the game the positioning the choices that's when you start to really express yourself as a DD or really express yourself as a player at all. But you have to get those basic things down. So right now, me being over your shoulder, I'm not going to be helping you to automate those decisions, but I'm at least trying to give you information so that maybe if you watch this back or when you play it forward, you have my voice in your head screaming, don't get closer, don't get closer, don't get closer, until you get to a point where you as a destroyer player can make the decision when do i get closer when do i feel safe enough to do something having that nagging asshole in the back of your mind hopefully gets you to that point <laughs> uh so fletcher similar detection to you yugamo uh 5.5 so out detects you that could be a problem if they know how to use it kitakazi i believe is like six it's a gunboat six ish whatever you are the only destroyer on the right side flank, which means congratulations, you get voluntold to be the DD over here. So that's what you're gonna do. So there's two options with the sea cap. You could run all the way up and just hide on top of the island and pop hydro. You could do that, but then you don't get to do anything and you don't get to see anything. So the better choice, at least from what I believe, is gonna be on that seven, eight line on the bottom of sea being reversed in and ready to run because you're gonna get information on the enemy team to allow your team to make good decisions. Sure. I'm just going off angle to the nine line and just turn the reverse into a seven A line. Sure, sounds great. And, uh, I hope the chat is kind to me. <laughs> yeah, they've been fine. Booster's thrown out a few suggestions, but uh, Nobody's been like, oh my god, this nub. So, no, it's all good. Well, to be fair, that's how I feel. Especially the, when the 8 top reversing with, with my big fat ass. It's, it's gonna happen, man. Okay, so, it's a minute and a half into the match. 
Uh, 90 seconds is enough that torpedoes could be active, so there could be torps being flushed your way. So go ahead and pop your hydro just to be safe, and then you're going to want to be in a position where you can get eyes on them, etc. So I can't see what the enemy ships are. Alaska. Is that an Alaska? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And the Bismarck behind it. So that's completely okay. So that 9.9, .9, again, just make sure that when you get to that 9.9, .9, you're kind of stopped so you could rocket forward if you have to bail. It's 9.6 now. It's moving okay. forward. So I'm moving forward at quarter speed. Yep. So here you can torp this. You can throw some torps in his direction now. Happy angle. Yeah, the angles are pretty shit. So the torp, you are not a torp boat. You are a gunboat. You can't smoke because you probably don't uh, have detection on the Alaska to be able to shoot him. Although, maybe you do, because he's firing. But you would also be telling the enemy where you are, so that would be awkward. Well, we... on, you no, you can't do it because you're within 8.5, so he would just radar you and take shots. Let's make sure you're not eating torps here. Should be alright. Mm-hmm. So the Alaska is eventually going to turn it. You, you got to move. You got to get away from the torpedo. Oh, I'm fine. I know you're fine. I just want to make sure you stay fine. So uh, I don't think I have a range for the torpedoes. Okay, so now you can start to shoot the Alaska as he goes behind the island if you wanted to, but he's going to be out, so that's cool. Um, I don't think those torps are going to do anything. He's going to stop behind the island and stay safe. Yeah, yeah. So start reversing. Unless the Alaska mm -hmm. comes around the corner, even if he radars you, yeah. which he just did, nobody can shoot you. Because look at how far away all that stuff is. So let's stop so that we're not hard into a reverse here. If the Alaska does turn the corner because he wants to get greedy, he's going to meet your torps. So that's unlikely to happen. Keep. Re if you see shells coming in, you can try to juke them. No. no shells at the moment. Radar is more than half done. If you want to reverse, that's fine. Just reverse at like half speed. So reverse, stop, reverse, stop, reverse, stop, you know, so that way you can at least pull out of a reverse a little faster. The radar is down. You can start reversing. Yeah, I think, uh, now you have options here. Something. You could try to take position and bully, which is kind of what we talked about, or you can get in a position where you can start farming down one of these battleships, which is probably what you do. They know where you are. They just radared you. So you could take shots here. And if you ever feel like you're under pressure, you can smoke. <clears throat> Keep shooting. Shoot. You have fast cycling guns. Use that. You even have an upgrade mm -hmm. for it. I think our sass is coming around the corner. What's it going on? Yeah, Massachusetts is dead. Oh, hello, you normal. Yeah, I think I need to bail. No? Why are you bailing? What's scary? What's going to kill you? What's happening that you're worried? Yeah. Uh, all the guns. Actually. You can't, you win. don't have range on them, yeah. So that's part of why you shouldn't have bailed. You should have still been reversing, so you kept uh, damaging on the battleship. This, well... Okay, so ah. the Alaska's radar is back up. And because you just lost somebody, the Alaska might want to get frisky. He might start pushing, so that's definitely a thing to be aware of. Also, because your RPF is now in the open water, right? Your RPF is in the open water, that's gonna be a DD. So keep reversing, and now fight it, fight him. Don't, do not run, fight, kill. Kill the Fletcher, kill the Fletcher. And his smoke is actually going to make you dark again, I think? No, you're detected by the Alsace. Smoke, 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 leave. You should go dark soon with the smoke, you do, because there's also a Yugamo over here. So you can heal, just keep bailing, and you can throw torps if you want to, but just single set's fine. Um, because there are two destroyers, 2v1, that's... Okay, so yeah, keep fighting, because you don't have the option not to fight. And once he, uh, once the smoke obscures him, you go dark, because your smoke is between you and the Yugamo. Just keep running, keep running, keep running. You may occasionally want to slam on the brakes just to see if you can juke some shells or something, but at this point, you can stop firing because uh, you're not going to be getting hits. So keep running. Occasionally do some moves, some jukes and stuff, but stop shooting because your uh, detection is going to go down around the same time as the radar does. 
and you have to keep bailing. There's a lot of them, there's not enough of you guys, so that's gonna be an issue. Once you, once you continue running here, the Izumo is gonna keep people lit, which means you can pop smoke and start to farm and then run some more. Find so slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, because you're dark, you're yeah, dark, you're yeah. out. Now pop your smoke and start to shoot. Get some damage in, do some stuff. Smoke, oh, smoke, on. smoke. There you yeah, go. <clears throat> now you can't really like stay super slow here because the Yugamo is going to be up your ass. You got to just shoot whatever you can. Doesn't just shoot, do damage. Preferably to the closest thing because the closest thing is pushing you and your friends. The closest thing is an Alaska that's right there. So shoot the Alaska because the Alaska has radar. You have 20 seconds. The Yugamo is going to be behind you soonish. You don't have to leave your smoke just yet, but just be ready to go. And you're going to have to deal with another uh, radar. Now you can bail because you can't see shit. So just go. Bail, 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 bail. You can throw torps at the uh, Alaska, which will, you'll have ready in six seconds. Don't be artistic with it, just dump it and run. You want distance between you and them. The Alaska's gonna have radar again. Both torps, one in front of him, whatever. Okay, so there was a huge gap there. You don't wanna do that. Try and link your torps up so you make like a, a flat line of 10. Have a guess as to where they're gonna be and then get out. Try not to maneuver, don't turn, just point your nose and fucking run. Uh, every time you turn, you bleed speed. You're not detected, you're okay. Right now, Jesus, how many are there? One, two, three, four. Yeah, there's a lot. So right now, what you have is the ability to delay them pushing if you've got that 10 kilometers. So once you get to a safe position away from the Alaska, you can actually start to cut south and threaten back caps or threaten torps into the side. Uh, so maybe on the eye line, also you might end up tripping across the Yugamo and end up taking a fight there. Um, unfortunately, your team did not win at A. So you're going to need to try and make your torps matter or some kind of bullying. Just keep running. Don't. Every time you turn, you lose wiggle, speed. Wiggle, wiggle. Every time you turn, yeah, you I'm lose speed. Yeah, yeah. I'm radar. Not so shit, you Gumo. Ooh, there's a Fletcher here too. I think I'm dead. You're not dead. Now you do have to start juking and shit. Eesh. Yeah. So we bled speed before the radar hit, which meant that we were completely locked in the radar. That's rough. So you definitely go down here. Um, you knew the radar's coming. You want to get as much speed between you and the Alaska as possible before you start repositioning or altering or whatever. You see how far the Alaska went south? Because of that, maybe it wasn't even feasible to think about torping from the I-line, the J-line. You have to respond off what the enemy's going to do. But... One thing you have to remember in the British DD is you are slow. You bleed a lot of speed in the turns, um, but because you are slow, enemy cruisers can catch you. So it's a little problematic there. You know, keep on pressing engine boost, it was not there. Oh, well. Yeah. So what, uh, so if I ran sooner, what the quantum I don't. But the problem with Jaguar is you don't float enough torps fast enough. I mean, there's about seven ships coming that way, including two DDs. Correct. So the Jutland is not a torp boat. The Jutland is a gunboat. The torps are a thing that happens to be strapped to its ass that you can shove in the enemy's direction. But you are designed to run around and kill people with guns. So the weird part about the Jutland is you're, you're, you have wonderful guns, so you want to shoot people. But you're a destroyer. So you need to do destroyer things. So you're stuck in a position where you need to be close so that you can provide frontline assistance and support, but you want to be at range so that you can gunboat the fuck out of everybody and murder people and look amazing. So there's a weird dichotomy to it. Um, it just is what it is. Realistically, okay, so what happened? Uh, they pushed the flank. The Alaska got into position. We were not going to be able to dislodge the Alaska. We just weren't. Did we get to see all the ships were charging? Uh, we didn't get to see two destroyers. We did see a Yugamo at one point. 
um, which actually is what I thought you were going to engage, but it turned out to be what, the Benson? No, the Fletcher is right. Yeah, Fletcher. So then it was a Fletcher and a Yugamo on top of you, and the Alaska came through as uh, your teammates started to thin out. And then the battleship started pushing, and it just became one big fucking charge fest. So we did smoke to throw some damage into them. I think you shot the Izumo that was off at the distance and then eventually shot the Alaska. But realistically, the damage was not enough to stop six ships. So we could have just not done that. We could have, well, they're coming pretty hard. Maybe we just bail early. So we could have left instead of using more of the smoke um, and tried to stay more at that 10 kilometer interaction with the Alaska. It's okay to have a 9.9, .9, although one thing that's worth thinking about is the Alaska going straight might go faster than the Jutland going straight. So if you're in that radar, he might be able to keep you locked in if he doesn't turn. But he definitely keeps you locked in if you turn, because you'll go from 32 something knots down to 22. You're, you'll bleed off 10 knots as soon as you start to hard turn in a Jutland. And then the enemy is closer, on top of you, etc. If you want to do some speed juking, you probably lose a little less speed that way, but I mean, it's just, it's tough. But realistically, in order to win a match, you have to at least win one flank. You kind of won A, but you lost a lot of people to do it, and they weren't able to do anything after it, and you obviously did not win C. So you didn't win the match. Huh. Happens. Uh, wonder if, if I could go to the middle, because there's no CV, would middle be a better choice to abandon C much earlier? Uh, possible, because you saw the Alaska's there. We know the Alaska had DD support, and they had more ships than we did. So yeah, maybe bailing on C was a good choice. You could have gone over to Bravo. So I don't think I was able to cap C anyway with Alaska and uh, Correct. DD there. You didn't have a chance for that. Because it wasn't just one DD, it was two, and you have uh, radar and hydro pressure off the island. So yeah, definitely no. So yeah, we could have bailed on C. Could have definitely done that, gone over to Bravo, maybe helped the uh, A-team shoot some people and kind of get them in the game. Uh, so yeah, maybe maybe running from C was the better choice. Because ultimately, staying at C was like pissing in the wind, you know? All it did was come back in your face. So... Sure. Yeah, I think this, that, this was a difficult match anyway. Yeah. They're all difficult. Just sometimes you make them look easy. <laughs> yeah, no, no, in my case. There's a 200k health difference, I mean. Well, there's 14 people on each, or 12 people on each side, so I wouldn't take it too personally. Yeah, no, just some, I don't think, maybe running to B might delay it, but I don't really think it ended there, because they had a two-third of team pushing up towards C, yeah. I mean. After game, you know what would be a better way? Yeah, after game is a great time to think about what could I have done different, what could I have done better? And I do agree. Uh, C was lost. There was no way forward to make C not be lost. Uh, your battleship was nose in, so he got hard farmed down. He didn't have a way out. So that's unfortunate with the battleship there. Trying to support him wouldn't have mattered because you just couldn't. Although it would have been nice to be able to like take advantage of the battleship spotting so that you could get some gunplay in but that didn't last very long and it got us too close to an alaska that was charging so it doubly didn't work out which sucks but yeah moving to b getting a cap that'd be a little additional base xp if nothing else and um it probably still would have led to a loss do it again Okay, so we have a radar off the Seattle, um, and that's it. Benham should have pretty decent detection, 5.6 to 5.8, somewhere in there. Z45, is that right? Z45? 46. 46, that's, that's the normal tech tree line, yeah. Kitakazi is 6-ish, Tashkent is Russian, so it probably is not good detection. And the Z46, I believe, is either 6 kilometers or 6.1. So you out-detect most of the things on the map, which is good. You have four DDs, two of them are center. They'll probably handle caps, which means you're going to be looking for wide positions. You're going to be looking for information out in the uh, Bravo 8, Bravo 9 line. 
Big thing is you have to pay attention to the island at D7 because of the way that it pokes out, it's really easy for somebody to rip over the side of that island and just like, surprise, motherfucker, and then you get hard lit. So you need to go out to uh, B7, B8, so that you can see around the other side of it. Now, notice that we only have two ships. We have a battleship and a cruiser, and that's all that we have over here. We seem to be uh, really good at spawning on the side where nobody wants to be. So that makes life tough, which is good for learning purposes, so that's nice. Uh, although we might be getting, what, a, Z, a ZF-6 coming over to help? Yep. <clears throat> and John Barr is coming over too, I believe. So once again, let's just remember that we have 5.7... Is that 5.8? 5.7. 5.7 detection. Which means... 5.8, eight, 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 gone. Got it. I was like, what the hell? Okay, so... So in general, what that means is you as a ship want to be fighting at around 5.7. Can you fight closer? Sure. Can you fight farther? Sure. But you want to be fighting around 5.7. So let's not put your detection right on the edge of that island. Let's give a little bit of space. Because if we end up tripping across like uh, the six kilometers, like a ZF, uh, the Z46 or the Tashkent or something, then we get to, whoa, 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 you're running kind of far. Um... You know, B8 is really where we're looking to go. We just want to have a little bit of space between our detection and the tip of that island, just to make sure that we're not going to, like, surprise, motherfucker, into somebody and then lose half of our ship yeah. to things that we can't see. Kilometers. I'm about six kilometers away from that tip. Yep. It's nothing. And your yeah. RPF is showing that looks like the closest thing to Somewhere you might actually be in Charlie. You could ping the map real quick to say, hey, it's over there, because your friends may not have RPF. Eh, no, it changed. Anyway, ZF6 going anyway. Cool. So. Should I just open up from John Bart? Where is Seattle there? It's nine kilometer radar? Or Seattle? Uh, Seattle is nine kilometer. Yeah. So, first off, don't be dead. That's the first many rules of Destroyer Club. Don't be dead. If you smoked and shot, you wouldn't see them anymore. Nobody else is spotting that. Mm -hmm. You might have detection on the battleship, though. I, yeah, I knew it. Seattle's going to radar me. Well, why would you let your... Right. Okay, so that's okay, because... No, it was a nine kilometer, so basically... Sure. So, you get to play okay. around with this. Don't be afraid to occasionally slow down, because the Seattle has to lead you fairly significantly yeah, with its I, guns. Once I pass nine kilometers, I'm going to slow down. And he should overshoot. Cool. So his radar is still going for the moment, although it will go down soon. And you do not want to open water gunboat, but you can torp. You can torp this. You can torp the battleships or something. And you probably wanted to reverse because you're already at the edge of your torpedo range. Throw a torpedo wall. Don't throw one and two. Put them together, one next to the one next to the other, so that they work together to give a nice wall. A Not wall of skill, as it were. Smoke and shoot. Yeah, smoke and shoot. Shoot. There we go. Rawr. Okay, cool. Doing the thing. Uh, realistically, if you had a choice, you wanted to be shooting the Seattle, but maybe that's the harder shot. If you feel like your guns are not up for hitting the Seattle, just shoot what you can, and please zoom in. Stop reversing. Stop reversing. Stop reversing. Stop reversing. There we go. Because you're just going to slide out of the smoke screen. So don't be afraid to zoom in on farther targets, because shooting, like, hitting them is good. Jump bars one engage engine boost. Oh well. You're not leading enough. So your smoke goes down. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you are far enough mm -hmm. away at this point that you can keep working on the Jean Bart. Because the Seattle is at like 11, 12 clicks. You might have to juke shells. Well, okay, the Bart is secondary spec. That's kind of interesting. But as long as you're prepared to juke shells at this distance, that's anyway. okay. And you can re-smoke if you want to, or... Mm, not looking where Seattle's going. You see, I think it's coming towards me. No, it's not. Let's just keep working on the BART. Hello? 
Seattle is on top of you. S smoke, please. Smoke, please. Respect the Seattle. Um, just, well, I get, yeah, you can't work on the BART from this range, so that's too bad. All right, you can leave smoke. Get eyes on the, get eyes on the Seattle. Let people know what's going on. So, while the Seattle's not taking shots at you, hey, you know, the incoming damage is pretty minimal, you don't have to worry. Now that the Seattle started taking shots at you, and they were getting fairly accurate, it was worth smoking to avoid taking damage for free. You never, ever, ever want to give damage for free. If you're ever leaving, if you're ever losing health, it's because the enemy is losing more health than you. If you're ever losing health, it's because you're taking map position that you need to take in order to win. Uh, we don't know where the Seattle is, but the Seattle's probably 10 or more kilometers away because we don't see him. He might be behind an island though, so please be ready for that. And your smoke is up soon, so why don't you go half speed instead of full speed, which allows you to slow down into smoke a little better. Remember, if you can speed up, go the same, or slow down, that's three ways to change your, your level of movement, which makes you harder to hit than only going same or slowing down. Give yourself more options. You could even go quarter speed if you wanted to. Oh, this is Seattle. Don't shoot him, he's too far. Stay on the battleship. Just shoot. Just shoot. Shoot a lot. All the guns. You are built to shoot things and make them hurt. So just enjoy shooting. You can even AP this, which you're already changing for. I think the uh, I think the British have the improved AP angles, just like a Minotaur might have. Doing all the damages. Make the make the dude dead. Now you're gonna to want to go back to HE because he's starting to angle. But some good hits. So now you can even go full speed, which you're already doing, so you can chase and get more damage in, which is fine. The Seattle is dead. Woot! Your team has succeeded. They're holding on the lower flank. Unfortunately, you're off on the edge of the world, so once this dude goes down, there's gonna be a whole lot of nothing to do. But, you know, it's nice to win, so is what it is. Yeah. Well, okay. This is a bit easier game than the last one. Mm-hmm. So we did some really good stuff in this one. 5.7 kilometer detection range, we used that. We made sure that we made the decision if we wanted to be detected. You did get a little close to the Seattle, but that was a choice you made, which is good. Why? Because we know the Seattle radar when it was used, but we were at a nice safe distance so that we could juke incoming Seattle fire, didn't take much damage at all. And then we also knew when the Seattle's radar was down, which meant we could be more expressive or choose to make decisions about what's gonna happen. And because we were at the 10, 11 kilometers away from a Seattle, floaty shells didn't really hit us at all, great. We got to farm stuff without even burning consumables. We didn't have to burn a smoke to be able to take shots in on the on the battleship. So good stuff. Also, we provided spotting and information for our team so that they were able to shoot as well. They were able to move up successfully. They didn't have to play with their thumb up their ass. So play again. Thanks. Well, I noticed this um, being about three hours, four hours, three, oh, three hours almost. So if you need to go, just let me know. It's not a... Uh, it's been two hours and 20 minutes since I started streaming. Okay. Yeah, we kind of waste a bit of time setting up at the beginning. Yes. He's okay. So, there's no CV, which means we can isolate more if we want to. There's a Buffalo radar, there's possibly a Neptune radar. Two Yugamos that outspot us at 5.5, we have 5.7. An Oyster, which we outspot, because it's six. And a Schultz, which we definitely outspot, because that's the German uh, cruiser DD. Uh, we are the only destroyer on this flank, so we definitely have to play information and frontlining. So we're gonna be going into the thick of things. It's worth remembering there could be a Buffalo radar or a Neptune radar, so we definitely have to play safe which means when we approach the cap, we're not approaching the cap to take the cap. 
We're approaching the cap because that's where the enemies are going to be positioning off of, which means that's where we have to be to be able to get information for our team to make plays off of. So you might actually want to start reversing even like when you get halfway through the D-line, when you pass that island right on your right, is where you start to turn and then start reversing from there. It can be really boring, it can be really slow, but it's safe. And safe means not dead, because right now it could be that all the middle, all the assholes in mid and H6 and H5 have all decided we're going to D. And before you know it, there's eight of them and there's like three of you. So there's potentially two radars on the enemy team. There's potentially Yugamos that can outspot you on the enemy team. So we're going to play super safe until we have a good idea as to what the fuck is happening. And then, you know, the biggest thing is, one, your health matters, and two, have a way out. So here's where you start to U-turn. Cool. We're only a minute, ten minutes into the match, so it's unlikely there are any torpedoes on the way, so we don't have to worry about popping the hydro early. <coughs> And once you complete the turn, you can start to reverse toward the cap and keep a good eye on your RPF. Um, one thing you might want to do instead of being completely dead center is to be a little more on the eight line because that would give you a little better eye idea where your guns are pointing behind that island. Usually radar cruisers like to hide there. So technically it gives us better vision on them, but it also gives them better shell angles on us, which sucks. You want to be reversing straight south. You don't need to worry about your gun angles until you got something to shoot. There's a Neptune. Cool. So we're already getting information, which is great. You will not shoot here. Um, <laughs> and you're going to keep reversing. It'd be nice if you could keep him lit, but I think he's going to go dark soon because there's nobody, nobody else can see him. If we were further off on the eight line, we'd have better vision back there. So your teammate might get another shot. Um, can you tell your battleship that's right next to you to get back? Because, like, I mean, he's got a smoke screen, but that's a little little close for comfort when there's 12 people that could murder you. Uh, my Bluetooth headset battery might be low, so I might have to... Uh, sure. Go, go so quiet after a while, but I have a speaker, should be able to hear you. So you're doing fine, you're still reversing. Oh, crap. Uh, keep reversing. Well, you almost think you live. Cool. Let's pop that hydro. How does that sound? And the Schultz is in smoke, so you can keep reversing, keep reversing, keep reversing, keep reversing. Schultz does not have hydro. You could throw torps into the smoke. I mean, he might yeah. get greedy. He might not get greedy. You don't know. And single torp. Try to cluster them together. You don't have to torp the same spot five times, but, you know, just kind of keep them a little, like, snugged up so that maybe... If the dude's still sitting in a smoke screen, that he gets uh, hurt. He buckered off. I'm capping, so he must buck it off. Well, your RPF is still pointing at the smoke, so stop. Oh, 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 oh. You're in the cap. You don't have to keep reversing. So, you know, we're getting information. We're even taking a cap. Don't shoot. Don't. Now, okay. At least you got your smoke going. That's good. Now you can shoot. You were so close to. Great. Good shit. You're so close to finishing the cap that. You know, uh -huh. make make that decision, but it's okay. So you're dark, you're not radared, you're going to be able to take the cap. Good shit with the torps. Thank you. I can't farm them now. <laughs> Realistically, I think the Schultz was so close that you had to shoot. Because he would have hard spotted you unless you smoked, so... Shooting was fine there. It was more of me trying to process the situation. Uh, I am not yeah, a DD main, so I have to process it just like you do. I've just played more battles than you. Uh, I think it was dead to torpedoes anyway, so I just just to make sure. I just ooh, got it wrong. Don't stay in the cap. Just I don't care where you run. Just make sure you stay in the cap while running. Yeah, I forgot that the short, short term. Damn it, short duration smokes. Yeah, so... Don't get locked hard reversing. Don't get locked hard reversing. You're showing broadside to a Brindisi. Yeah. Smoke, so. smoke, smoke, smoke. Stop, stop. Some good jukes. Use the smoke. You can start farming. You can shoot. Just uh, mm. let's pay attention to your smoke timer here. Yeah. I'm just wondering torpedo from ben Brindisi. Oh, hello. No, Brindisi's not going to torp you. You're fine. 
I mean, they're troll torpedoes. Hit shift. Do me a favor, hit shift. Okay, yeah. hit shift again. Zoom, oh, yeah, zoom all the way in. Now hit shift again. Don't move out of the cap. Don't move out of the cap. Don't move out of the cap. It's really easy to just take off in these things like a rocket. So even going to like quarter speed, <laughs> you just launch forward. It can really fuck with you. Okay, back it off. Uh, my actually, my best friend, he doesn't use the shift key to zoom in and zoom out. He just manually mouse scrolls, uh, which I understand, but you lose a lot of time when you're mouse scrolling like that. And there are a lot of times where you're taking long range shots that you're not zoomed in. So you're not giving yourself the best shot possible. Like that's the difference between a sniper using a scope on a sniper rifle or just kind of eyeballing it from a mile away. Like it's not that it couldn't work, but set yourself up for success. Use the tools that you have available. And if you can zoom in more on a ship, like a battleship, that's really not going to be moving, you know, make it matter. You can smoke, smoke, smoke. I don't know what you're detected by, but there is a Brindisi in the area, so. All right, well, you're going to get away with it. Never mind. So smoke is good. It's going to keep you safe. And you can keep farming. Um... You may not have needed to smoke. You may have been perfectly fine. And waiting to see if you were fine is that's a perfectly okay play. Mostly, I just I didn't want you to get surprised, and it's better to err on the side of caution. Yeah. Well, plenty smoke to spare, I suppose. That is true. You have seven smokes, so you can you can pop them left, right, and center, man. It's like you're throwing down uh you're throwing down singles in a strip club. You know, you're the dude like, oh man, oh yeah, I'm making it fucking rain. I'm making it smoke yeah. up in this bitch, you know, whatever, you know, have fun with it. But, uh, so the Brindisi is a real threat to you, but at this distance, you could take shots if you wanted to. I'll wait while he fires first. No. All right, so I'm going past my range anyway. Well, slow down and bow in. Slow down and bow in. He's going to be shooting you, possibly. And as long as you're bow in, the sap shells will ricochet off your hull. And now he's dark. So, all good. Um, I guess you can force the situation on the battleship. You guys are pretty starkly in the lead by this point. You have a lot of health and they have a lot of not health, so that's cool. You don't have to be artistic with this. You don't have to sneak around the side of the island. Just get the battleship lit. So... I will say, though, that if you went around the island like you were planning, that keeps you safe from the Brindisi. So that's actually a good play. It's just going to take the longer to get the battleship lit. So if you want to head around the left side, that's not, that's not bad instincts. That's good choice. So why don't we go around the left side just for the fuck of it? I think you can still make this turn. That's where you were initially going, and I called you off of it, and I think that was wrong for me to do so. So I wanted to make sure I pointed that uh, out because this 50 -50. works. 50-50. Well, not 50, only 50 that, game. you might have torpedo angles and you have full health, so potentially, you know, you could make it happen. He probably just ran away for, oh, you imagine. He's probably just still reversing around the island, so you might get torps here. Now he might be going forward. Hmm. Torp see. ahead of him? Like, and another further head, further head, further head, further head, further head, oh, whatever. Now you can smoke. Hello. Oh, wait, you're hydroed. So no, you can't. You just get to shoot him. Oh. Use AP into the side. Use AP into the side. He sees your torps, by the way. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. okay. You might still kill him. And just dump a bunch of stuff. Get your heal going. Get your heal going. Get your heal going. Get your heal going. Mm, I think a torque could go him. Go, so, go, go, go. in this case, you got to YOLO. No, not ah, enough. No. You need to lead more. Um... <laughs> Because he's accelerating. You know he's going to full forward. He doesn't want to yeah. get torqued. That's okay. I got back up. Yeah, don't be afraid to lead more with your shells. You kept missing behind him. Mm. So definitely want to make sure that you're shooting correctly. All right, well, you have a lot of ships and they don't. So you can do whatever you want. Yeah. But one of the things that's worth pointing out on this... 
there were a few times in the earlier games where you wanted to get in there and you wanted to torp somebody. You wanted to go make plays and make things happen. And often when you did that, you had 20% health. In this <laughs> case, you had basically full health. So you had the option to be able to YOLO up and make some, st make some stuff happen. Yeah, the torps didn't hit. So the guy lived longer than he should have lived. But you did too because you had the health to be able to make that play. So health is something that enables you to make things happen. And the more health you have, the more things you can choose to make things happen. The less health you have, the less options you have and the safer you have to play. So you were able to make, your, make sure that your health lasted through the early game, even into the mid game. And then you got to play around and have fun at the end because you had so much health in your back pocket. Play again. So I'm not a DD main, so my apologies on calling you off there. I think that was a fine play, um, which oh, is why yes, I wanted to make a point it. to say, nah, man, we could definitely do this because it was a fine play. Uh, all right, so looking at enemy Ooh, CV as a Parzival, that's not going to be a significant threat to you. Yeah, he could torp you, but most, most CVs are not going to be accurate enough with their torps to actually threaten you. And he's probably not going to rocket or bomb you, so not a big deal. There are only two destroyers, which means you are absolutely playing destroyer in this match, but there is an Alaska and a Stalingrad radar to be aware of, and you could be spotted by the Parzival, even though the Parzival is not a threat to you. Uh, you are out detected by the Yugamo, and the Cossack is similar to you, I think. I don't know. I think it's 5.6 or 5.5. .5. So head over to Charlie. Now, you also have to remember, because there are only two destroyers, your team is going to go where the destroyers go. Because otherwise, they feel scared and naked and alone, and they're going to console themselves as they cry themselves to sleep in the back of the map. So where you go is where they go. So if, for instance, you went Bravo here your team would completely abandon the sea flank, give all of that shit up, and then you'd, you'd just be wrapped and potentially murdered. So you're definitely going to see. You're definitely looking to figure out if you're going to brawl. Very good job on going half speed while the enemy planes are coming in for a spot. So you're going to have some uh, cruiser support with the AA. Not that you're under a big amount of threat, but it means that he's not going to linger on top of you, which is nice. Pretty soon he's going to start turning uh, because of the Ibuki's position he has to turn out, although I don't know if he took damage. That's perfectly okay. No rush. We know what our aerial detection is. We see the circle. We don't have to tell him where we are. And right now, we all we have is a Thunderer and uh, it looks like Potato. Is that a Montana? I don't know Montana, what that is. Yeah. Yamato. What is that? Oh, Rune, Yamato, Montana, Ibushi, okay. Thunderer. Right, Montana. I, I look kind of like Shoot. Potato. Your screen with the <laughs> widescreen, it's it's kind of... It's a little tough to see. Yeah. All right, so uh, that fighter is halfway through its uh, thing. We can start to move up a little more. Just make sure that your uh, detection circle doesn't give away your information for free. So right now, they're capping Charlie and you're not. Doesn't that suck? Isn't that terrible? Well, the CV player made a play. The CV went over, dropped a fighter, blocking the C cap. So because of that, you have to respect the fact that the CV player made a play. Just like if a destroyer torps an area and you have to turn away from a place you want to be, well, the destroyer made a play. In this case, the CV made a play, so you get to hold back. They've got, uh, they've got a lot of, uh, or sorry, they're going to take C before you get there. But we also get to see there's only like two of them plus a destroyer in there. Your RPF is on the destroyer. You could ping the map where you think he is. Give your team an idea of what's going on. And potentially the uh, CV might go over and harass him with bombs. And because you've got four people in your back pocket, although they're all turning away for some reason, you have more friends than they do. And you also have... Uh, is there a DD in the south that got spotted? What is that? What's an A? Uh, Yugumo. Okay, so the Cossack is up here. You can brawl the Cossack. You can make that happen. Okay, there's an Ibuki. Ibuki's going to have extremely accurate guns. And now we get to see more. So how about this? Let's not take a fight. Let's start reversing. Let's get our, our ass pointed at the enemy so that we can have them kiss it as we say goodbye. And we're going to start looking for information. No, torps don't matter. Unless you're going to torp your RPF, torps don't matter. But we are going to start contesting the cap because right now they're getting points. And because we're in a British DD, we can always fuck off. And good job spotting big damage on the uh, 
and the Ibuki. Pop smoke, pop smoke, pop smoke, pop smoke, pop smoke. Because you're going to be lit by not only the Parzival, but also the DD. DD is lit smoke as well. Hydro. Hydro. You might have Destroyer Torps coming in because he was broadside to you. So he might throw stuff there. You have no reason to keep backing up. Uh, just watch for the planes and watch for his Torps. Planes are going to miss. Don't go forward. Don't go forward. Well, okay, whatever. You just have to move... Avoid those uh, Jutland Torps or Cossack Torps or whatever. Yeah, I'll call them. Yeehaw. So, we definitely want to keep our ass pointed at the enemy. If you want to shoot, that's okay, but no, 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 stop, stop. Don't shoot, don't shoot, don't shoot. What does your smoke oh, timer say? Your smoke timer yeah. says you have almost no smoke left. So, now, the Cossack smoke is going to go down about the same time as yours. You need to start bailing, because that CV... Is not going to do damage to you, but he's going to be on top of you. You have smoke soon. If you want to take shots at the Cossack, that's okay. But there's a lot of them, and there's only one of you, and you're in a forward position. So pop your heel, slam on the brakes, slam on the brakes and smoke. <clears throat> so the good news is the Cossack is lit because the Cossack fired. Unfortunately, now he's not. All your team is playing pretty scared. So how about this? Remember that C cap where we weren't able to do anything? This is looking like we're not going to be able to do anything because your team is not committing. So how about we head over to Bravo instead? Yeah, time for plan B. Yeah, if our team's not going to give a shit, then uh, it's time to leave. <clears throat> Granted, there's a whole lot of them up there, so it's probably not a bad idea that our team has decided to fuck off. Watch for the torps. Yeah, I see them. It should be. All right. And we need to get away, because right now we are super exposed against planes. So if the enemy CV... You gotta keep moving, gotta keep moving. You're turning into the torp here. No, it should be alright. Cool, let's go to B. Uh, because you're so far forward, you have no AA support. If the planes want to sit on top of you, they could. The Cossack could shoot at you from smoke. It's just... It's an awkward situation. Yeah, I'm not going through the middle of a two island here. It's too dangerous in case of cold stuff there. I agree. I think that's a fine choice. All right, so it looks like the Fontosk is going to take B, so you can stay where you are. But let's try to stay five or six kilometers away from friendly ships in case the enemy planes decide to be on top of us. And where is your RPF ping? Ping the map. Uh, straight ahead. Ping the map. Ping the map. Tell, say where you think the DD might be. And are you going closer to the enemy, or are you going further away from the enemy? Going closer. And away from your friends. He who has more friends wins. So you might be able to jump the Cossack, you might be able to take the fight, especially with the Fontosk helping. But at the moment it's still pretty sus. How about this? Just take a left and head to B. Maybe you can interact with the Cossack at the same time as the Fontosk. So maybe you can make that happen, but you need to ignore C. I don't know. I'm cool. Go behind him. So we could definitely make a play there. He's in smoke. He's not going to be moving. What's this Stalingrad? Right there. Okay. I, I Just can't. In case it's radar. I can't nice see. Stalingrad. I can't see most of the names on your screen because they're oh, they're blurry. So. So starting Grand Alaska, the 16, 17 kilometer away, so I don't need to worry about the radar. So your Fontask has health. You're going to have a smoke advantage on the Cossack, and right now nobody's really in a position to be able to fight you, so yeah. I want you to fight this Cossack when he comes out of smoke. Sure, I have no hydro, but oh well. You'll be okay. If the Cossack wastes okay. time to torp you, cool. then he probably loses the gunfight, so... Fight him, fight him, fight him. Make sure every shot you throw is accurate. Don't be doing any long range silliness. If you can zoom in and make your shots matter, then you zoom in and you make your shots matter. You take the best shots possible every time. There we go. Dead Cossack, head in and take B. 
I think I'm going for C behind this. No, no, B. You want to secure B because you can secure B. And if you go into Charlie, you have planes oh, up your ass while you have no friends anywhere near you. You're in and out of a smoke cloud. Just go into B. Go into B. Okay. Use your friends. Your friends are close to B. Your friends are off on the 9 and 10 line. C is nowhere near anybody on your team. So yeah, fuck this shit, the you're out. BP rocket. The sooner you get out of the oh, open shit. and away from people shooting you, the better. You could have smoked there as well if you wanted to save some health, but... Oh, uh, yeah. What What is the cruiser? That's the Stalingrad, uh, so let's... D7... It's the cruiser. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, the D7 province. So okay, that's what... These, all right, cool. Stalingrad's 15 kilometers away. So D's nuts? Okay. You can torp him. You can torp him. Oh. Yes. Just throw a wall. Just throw a wall, be done with it, and then you can smoke and shoot him with your guns. Smoke and shoot him with your guns. Shoot! Mm. Zoom in. Don't shoot from a distance. Zoom in, make the shots count. Every single shot, you want every single shell to hit the ship. No, D7 doesn't have torps, he has airstrikes. Oh. Oh, okay, this may be just as fun. If you can, stay zoomed in so that you make sure that you're shooting on cooldown as fast as possible, always accurate. Because uh, you'll you'll zoom out, and then you kind of like wait a few seconds, and then you zoom in, and like you're, you're turning a four-second gun reload into a six-second gun reload. You want to make it matter. Your smoke is almost down. Stop shooting. And the D7 is dead. Woot. So we can start to position to work on ships in the uh, D2, D3 line, or we could head over to Charlie. It looks like the Fontosk is going that way. Um, I'm going to Charlie. There's no radar there. I can just... And, uh, and, uh, I think you could work on... Like yeah, this is a little awkward because the CV could spot you out. Uh, you need to help A because your Lexington is dead. Uh, if you can take shots on cruisers, shots on cruisers. I think there's an Alaska or something you can see. Just smoke up yeah. and start farming. Need to turn first. Come on, you slow ass. Just smoke and shoot. AP. AP into the side. AP into the side. And stay zoomed in so we can see the thing so we can shoot it. The back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You're just wasting gun time here. I mean, you don't want to, like, be so paying attention to something that you're missing other stuff that's happening, but you've got me in your back pocket, and you're spending a lot of time going on the in, the out, the in, the out, and it's just slowing down how quickly you can shoot, and you need to take advantage of that, that gun pressure. You can go back to HE, which you already did, which is good. You're, you're aiming too far off to the right. You want to... Yeah. All right, so your smoke is down anyway, so we can start to move. All right, so torpedoes are, well, they might light you, but it doesn't matter. Um, I think you still have to stay on A because your your CV is still getting pinched. This dude being on you doesn't matter. Just make sure you use priority sector because your your AA is terrible. That's way too close. That doesn't do anything. Look at the ships that are going to shell you. See if there's shells coming in. Turn right, turn right, turn right, turn right. Cool. Back it off now? Yeah. Can you start working on that battleship? Can you shoot the battleship while you're doing this? Just set your guns and shoot while you're you're doing whatever. Okay, so the planes have fucked off. Let's start hard farming a battleship. Let's get over there so we can start doing something. Do not smoke, just open water gunboat. It's a Yamato. He's probably not going to shoot at you. He might, but as long as you still have like 10 kilometers, 8 kilometers, whatever, you got a little distance between you and him. Oh, he's looking at me. Well, then smoke. And now you can keep shooting him because he uh, because he shot while you were in smoke, which means you'll be able to smoke detect Ash. him. You did lose a lot of health for that, but it is what it is. You can lose health, 
and you need to make plays right now because you guys are not in a good position. Stay zoomed in, make the shots. Stay zoomed in, yeah. make the shots. I, I dropped torpedoes. I know, but he's at the edge of the distance or whatever, and you're losing gun time. Stay zoomed in, make the shots. He's going to light himself again. Stay zoomed in, make the shots. Do not torp. He's at 10 kilometers away. They're just going to range out. Stay zoomed in, make the shots. Because <clears throat> when you're zooming in and zooming out, you're picking new positions to shoot at, so your your shots are not tracking the ships very well. So you you got to give yourself... The chance to win. Do not torp him. Maybe if I should stun. I don't see if he's moving forward. Now that you can torp. Torp, uh, torp further in front because he's not going to go full speed. There. No, no, not earlier no, than the white line. He's dead already. Good. Well, then that's even better. So the Stalin is dead. Awesome. Get back on the Yamato when you can. Smoke. You're going to want to smoke here. Because we already saw that the Yamato knows how to hit you, and uh, you're going to have a CV on top of you as well. So, farm. All the damages. Shoot, shoot, shoot. You need to lead more, because he's full reversed. That's okay. Come on, give me a fire. There we go. So, when you're in a DD, you have the option to shoot other parts of the hull and try to set more than one fire. Uh, that's definitely a thing you could do, or you could just keep dumping into the superstructure and get direct damage. Whatever is fine. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, he respots himself, and nobody really has shots on you, so you can just keep farming, even though your smoke is almost down. So, you are still dark. You can keep shooting. Zoom in. Yeah, Zoom in. Set yourself up for the best shot possible. He's moving forward, isn't he? Uh, yeah, it seems like it. I try to aim for the bow to see if he can get a fire, but I don't think it aims that good. Well, aiming at the bow just means he goes forward into your uh, shots and takes them superstructure, so it's fine. Shooting him is better than not shooting him. You have one last smoke, so right now you don't have to use it, and you're already dark again, which is nice. He's detected by somebody else, maybe the Fantasque. Who else is left? Come on, come on. You can throw torps at that. Torp him. Just one set. That's fine. And shoot him. Keep shooting. All the guns. All the shooting. All the doing. Making stuff happen. You guys are still behind by 40,000 health. Just set the X on the tip of his nose on your mini-map. Smoke? Well, soon. He's he's almost around the corner. And you can start to AP again into the uh, superstructure or whatever. I think he eats two of those, which is nice. You have a smoke yeah. screen. You're fine. Ooh. CV's back. Yeah, that's okay. CV's not going to do enough damage to matter. Just keep yeah, shooting the model. Yeah, and it did almost no damage. Nobody cares about German torps. So... <laughs> So he is dead. Good. All right. So you still have C, which is nice. This is your last smoke. You do not have more smokes than this. Um, you're ahead in points. They have one cap. Let's start looking over at Charlie and see what we can see. So let's head over to Charlie and see what we can see because we've already lost A. Now you could try to farm the stuff that's on A. I don't know if there's a battleship or something. I can't see what its name is. If you look over your shoulder. Um, conquer Alaska. They're about 40% 40, 40 health each, last reported. So you could work on the Conqueror, but it's probably not going to be a kill. That's up to you. But I think watching C is time. going to be important, and not dying is important, because you almost have enough points to win. I don't know where the Montana is. It's not even on the map. Not the Republic. Isn't the Montana in F8? Or you're talking... No, that's Republic. That's Red Montana. It's not even on the map. Oh, no, there is. Wait. Yeah. There's no Red Montana. The Montana's on your team. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, I think I might need a break. 
Okay, sure. I follow well, him? Let's, let's find this could be our last one. Uh, just the thing is, if you die, it makes everything harder, but you do want to reset him. Yeah, I'm just waiting for going until he fires and it's going to turn out. Oh, Lead a little more. Better. Shoot. Yeah, it's not even looking at me. Yeah, but the things in the south might be looking at you, so try to try to be head on a swivel on this one. No, no shells, fine. good. No, oh, he's looking. Time to go. The more you turn, the slower you accelerate. Not dead. Good shit. So you've got a bunch of resets, which is cool. I mean, for a long-term game. But uh, you're holding B, yeah. and B is going to secure the win as long as you don't lose anybody in the next few seconds. No. Well, I think we are one on point on this one. Good yeah. shit. Cool. Oh, that is uh, the longest ever survived in the DD for a long time. Well, <laughs> the whole match. <laughs> uh, well, I think you've had a few matches where you've ended alive, which is good. Uh, there was a oh, two no, brothers 20, match as well. I think it's a twenty minute. Yeah, yeah, it's almost twenty minute game. So. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to port. And just to see how many wins and how many losses did we have. Wow! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven against two. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, nine games, seven wins. Oh wow! So you are one ship out of twelve, but your decisions matter. DDs are incredibly important because DDs allow the team to do things. And while you might want to be uh, in a gunboat DD running around gunboating and stuff, having a front line. Having a forward presence, having a cap threat, these are things that matter. So, um, some people play for damage, some people play for kills. I try to play the map. And we absolutely, I gave you probably bad information, and unfortunately I don't know what the bad information was. There are people in chat that might have more information than me, because I think they called out, yeah, I don't agree with that one. <laughs> but still... It's closer, you know, it's more than you had before, so I hope it was useful. Um, oh, it's great. It's, um, yeah, so stay alive. Stay alive and the spot for the team at the beginning, and then you can move, move into the more aggressive towards mid or late of the game. Mm -hmm. In the mid game and the late game, the more health that you have, the more options you have the more chances you can take, the more wiggle room you have. So keeping that health solid in the early game can translate to huge gains in the mid and the late game. So, yeehaw, I hope you had fun. I think the, the British DDs are great as a learning tool because you have so many options to figure shit out. Whereas when you start going into like uh, US destroyers, you know, they're really supportive. They can take a fight, but their guns are awkward at range. Their smoke is weird. It's not very protecting for you. You know, every de every destroyer line is going to be different. The British line is wonderful for letting you do what you're going to do. So I would recommend kind of playing with this so that you can feel out your concealment. You can have the safety of being able to smoke and get the fuck out. You have guns, which are exceptional. Um, this is a great line to train on. The German line, I think, is also pretty good because you have the Hydro to kind of keep yourself safe, but the German line is weaker than the British line in terms of personal play. So everybody's got to start somewhere. This is going to be my recommendation for you as a place to start. Once you feel really rock solid on this, you can start to transition to other lines and figure out what their characteristics and specialities and stuff are. Wow. Do you have Great. any other well questions before, uh, before we wrap? Uh, no, thank you very much. I mean, the result kind of uh, vindicated your your you know train of thought and uh, your process. So there were matches we couldn't win, to be honest. So you know, it's, it's not down to you, your decision, your shot calling. I would imagine. So yeah, you do the best I you mean, can. Yeah, it's no, it's great. I think I know what to do now. So now I just have to, like you said, muscle memory. Mm -hmm. Needing a shot, watch out, watch out for the, um, well, basically, reversing to the cap, 
Oh, watch don't 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 get into torpedo range. Yeah, muscle memory <laughs> takes lazy. muscle memory takes hundreds of games, which sounds obnoxious, but it is what it is. Hundreds well, of early remember. games, mid games, late games, hundreds of times before you start to just get the shit down and you're just your mind gets to free up so that it can do all the other shit and figure out the map and figure out what you want to do. So if you go forward and you play another 10 or 20 or 40 games and you're like, oh man, this is just tough, that's okay. Because the more you play, even if you're not winning, you're still getting those muscle memory pieces down so that you can automate that and then you can focus your mind where it needs to be so you can focus your mind on winning. But okay, so we're gonna wrap. Uh, it's been a fun three hours. I do have a, a gig that I have to do for work. Um, so thank you, it was fun, Rar. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, you too, man. See ya. And, ho and hope Chad had fun too. <laughs> I think so. All right, bye. Good.